is all about to disappear with this kick. And with it, the Volunteers go back to work. The kick is covered at the one-yard line by Dorettencourt. And he carries it out just shy of the 25-yard line. And Wyoming will go to offense with their quarterback, Jay Stoner. Tim Beasley will get the majority of the carries. But in this wild and crazy offense for Dana Dimmel, their wide receivers featuring Wendell Montgomery, they see they'll get 40% of the handoffs. And the offensive line features Dan Del Corio, and he'll try and hold off the very talented Darwin Walker. Here we go, first and 10 for Wyoming on their own 23-yard line. Stoner is the quarterback. As Beasley to his left. Swinging gate. Different offense. They line up three offensive linemen outside. Pass play is overthrown. Looking for Kofi Shuck, the wide receiver. The Tennessee defense looked like this. As we mentioned Darren Walker. He's the best of a very good bunch up front. The linebackers, Dominique Stevenson. Well, he will replace or try to replace the departed Al Wilson. And in the secondary, look for Deion Grant. He's so talented with free safety. We might actually see him on offense at wide receiver. We will look for that. No gain on the play on the incomplete pass. It is second and 10 now at the 23. Beasley is behind the quarterback, Stoner. Some shifting on the offensive line. Flag flies. And we get the whistle. Interesting with the very first play, Steve. They went with the swinging gate. They had three offensive linemen out at the hash trying to do something very different to shake up the Tennessee defense. I think Dana Dimmel understands that he's got none to lose. He's going to let it all hang out, even though it's the first game of the year. This offense for Wyoming, as we wait for the official call, is crossed between a run and shoot and a wing bone and a single wing and a swinging gate as well. This is interesting here, Steve. A lot of people don't understand that the collegiate rule, if you incite the man to move, in that case, the defensive end for Tennessee, that's going to be a penalty against the defense. Good call by the official. Sean Ellis, the penalty called against him, brings up a second and five. Stoner calling signals. Beasley behind him. They send one man in motion, and they give it to Beasley. Up the middle, he is shy of the 35-yard line. See, they had what they wanted there with the wide receiver in motion. They vacated the premises, and the result was that the Beasley was up the middle for good yardage. Beasley, they're really counting on this year, simply this reason. Marcus Brigham, their leading rusher last year, who was over 1,100 yards, has graduated. Beasley is the leading returning rusher with a mere 200. A lot is on his shoulders. They give him a four-yard gain. That'll bring up a third down and one at the 32. Man in motion, and that's what they will do all day. This time they give it to the man in motion, and he will be caught for a loss. Cliff Bry, the wide receiver, is the one who went for it. He went outside, but this is the difficulty that's going to happen here, and that's this. If they're going to try and go outside, they're not going to be successful. The team speed of Tennessee is going to be a bit too much. For the Wyoming Cowboys, they're going to have to make haste, Steve, between the tackles. Cliff Bry lost eight on that play, and we were told to look, to watch them, to go for it from time to time. Confirmation wearing. But not at this point on the field, you wouldn't expect, Nate not this Parker. early in the game. Eric Parker is deep to receive the expected punt from Tennessee from Tom Waring. And it's a good punt. Takes a bounce for Wyoming. And it'll be down just outside the 30-yard line. Tennessee will go to offense. The fullback is a guy to watch Philip Crosby. He replaces Sean Bryson, who Coach Philip Fulmer said was probably their biggest loss. The wideouts, Cedric Wilson is the big play go-to guy. But David Martin is a player with all sorts of serious potential. He's got it all on the offensive line. Features Cozy Coleman, the junior was all SEC in his sophomore season last year. Here's T. Martin, and our first look at him on field in uniform since the national championship game. And he gives, and it's a quick game. Big game there for Jamal Lewis, and welcome back, Jamal. 21 yards on the carry. Well, everybody was waiting for that. Truthfully, during the, during the fall camp, they made it a point to not get him hit much. He only had really about three or four carries against live tackling but 
clearly he is ready to go a caged up animal he's had enough of the rehab give me the real thing and if that is important of things to come Lewis is going to have a tremendous season tough to have a better start than that really 21 is. yard carry again he's not played since game four of last season first down at the 47 yard line give up the middle it's Lewis again not as much that time but they are across midfield Matt Lenning makes the stop right the first two plays Steve are clear that the offensive line of Tennessee is getting off they're creating some chasms for the big guy behind them shy of the first down they give him six makes it a second and four and Lewis two carries 27 yards we'll take that average here's Martin in the I formation and it's the give up the middle Lewis the carrier looks like he comes up just short of the first down here's the Wyoming defense those guard Jeff Boyle is one pound shy of 300 he's the man in the middle up front the backers Patrick Chuck Wura he's a playmaker from what they call the bandit position and the secondary Trent Gamble he moves over from his strong safety to quarterback for this one Al Rich from free safety to strong safety we'll watch for that brings up a third and a long one Martin's going to give it off and a tackle for a loss. Good stop there by Chuck Wuerra. We said he's the playmaker for the bandit position, and there it is. He comes from the backside and shows the great speed because, of course, he's going to come on block. Here he is right here, and they figure, well, he's not quick enough to get over there. Yes, he is. There he is. He shows great quickness in getting in the backfield and nailing Jamal Lewis. He led the team last year with 11 tackles for loss. He is their big play guy. Loss of three on that play. John Jennings is deep to receive for Wyoming. David Leverton gets it away for Tennessee. He'll let it go, bounces into the traditional checkerboard end zone here at Neyland Stadium. 10.45 left in the first. Wyoming hanging around early. We're scoreless. Back in Knoxville, Tennessee. Scoreless early on. Wyoming and the Vols. Second possession upcoming for the Cowboys. First and ten from their own 20-yard line. They used a no huddle throughout. Lots of motion, lots of wide receivers. Have four loops and one in motion. And it's a handoff to Tim Beasley. And he's up to the middle. Not much there. One of the things, one of the things too, that's very interesting with Wyoming is that everybody has an individual sweatband of a different color. That will set formation, and that will set the count off time. You can see right there the numbers. Everybody has that, and they have to look down from time to time. Hence the reason why they are able to utilize the no huddle situation. No gain on the play. Bring up a second and ten from the twenty. Three receivers to the left of Stoner. Drops the pass. Avoids the pressure momentarily and is dropped down to the field. Darwin Walker, the first man in. Well, one of the big one of the big issues is going to be Darwin Walker versus Del Corio. You're going to see at the snap of the ball, there's not enough of a drop for Stoner. He takes three steps, but that's just not enough room. You can see Walker able to come off the block and, and along with number 40 able to drop the quarterback what's going to have to happen for stoner is that he's somebody that's going to have to get a little bit more of a drop because the pass rush of tennessee is so fierce coupled out with the fact three red shirt freshmen on the offensive line for wyoming starting this football game great idea how about this a quick kick on third down it's fielded by tennessee Dion grant the free safety was back for it More college football coming up for you and talking about some 11 minutes from now. Over on ESPN, South Carolina against the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. New South Carolina head coach Lou Holtz leading the Gamecocks into Raleigh. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com. One of the fun things about that, you're right, you don't see a quick kick very often. I think the last time I saw that was Randall Cunningham out of the shotgun in Shea Stadium. You remember that? <laughs> and he was pretty good at it, as I remember. Yep. 
So Tennessee will take over on first and ten from their own 36-yard line. Here's Martin dropping the pass. Looks for the screen right. And what a grab that was by Jamal Lewis and makes extra yardage on his own. 12 yards in the first down for Tennessee. Even though it looks like it's not a very good pass, actually it is, and here's why. When you run the loop route as a back, you want to be led. You don't have to stop. See, he has his momentum going. Watch. Now he squares his shoulders, able to cut, shake Rich, and cut up the field and get the first down. When you have a 235-pounder with 4-4 speed, you want his shoulders north and south. What a catch. Forget about the run. What a catch in the first play. And there's Lewis. The number's on him. Career. Probably averaging 12 yards in this game already. And they first and 10 now. They're on 48. Give again to Lewis. A little hesitant in that case. It appeared that the offensive line had driven the Cowboys back about two or three yards, and he couldn't make a decision, so he just plowed in to get about four. For somebody who was tentative, supposedly with the knee injury, they're getting him the ball an awful lot here in the first two series, Steve. We expected to see... They've got some real depth at the running back position, Tennessee, in uh, Travis Henry and Travis Stevens. But right now, the bulk of the work going to Lewis. They've handed him the ball on every Tennessee snap, rushing five times and receiving once. Finally, a different target. And it's Eric Parker on the reception from T. Martin, a gain of 13. Trent Gamble on the stop for Wyoming. T. Martin actually was thinking of throwing the ball in on the loop route once again to Lewis, but he had such good time. The protection was so good that he was able to sit back, go to his second option, this case Parker, who came up with a grab downfield. Take a look at the time he has. He's able to sling that sidearm. Great job of Parker coming back to the ball and getting the first down. Parker there, leading punt returner before he was injured last season, returned just in time for the title game. Let's say that's just in time. First and ten. Fake handoff. Martin. Little pass just behind the receiver. Unable to make the grab. There's a flag down. There's going to be defensive holding in the secondary. What happened is that the wide receiver went down and ran a corner. Wanted to run a deep comeback route. And it appeared that the corner grabbed his shirt. They sort it out on the field. Referee today is Scott, Steve Landis, rather. Only on the defense during a play in which there was a forward pass across the line of scrimmage. By Rue, that's a first down. The officials, all of them from the SEC, Dana Dimmel said he didn't have a problem with that. The misdirection is what caused that. What they ended up doing is what's called a turmoil, where they fake left and roll right. And the result was the corner was on an island. He was beat. He didn't want to get beat, so he grabbed the shirt, hence the reason for the penalty. First and ten at the 25 of Wyoming. And it's a give to the tailback. Lewis, five, touchdown! Welcome back, Jamal Lewis. 25 yards for the score, and Tennessee is on the board. Two things particularly impressive about that, Steve. First is the block at the point of attack and the fact that Jamal Lewis absolutely cannot be tackled with arms. He just can't. He's far too powerful. Extra point attack for Tennessee. Robert Laudermilk on the way and he's got it. Thanks to a 25-yard touchdown sprint by Jamal Lewis. The Volunteers are rolling. They take a 7-0 lead. Back in Knoxville, 7-0 Tennessee. Thanks to Jamal Lewis. As a freshman, he averaged 114 yards per game. He's almost halfway there. Six carries, 55 yards rushing already. For Jamal Lewis. Don't forget his freshman season too, Steve. He didn't start the first four games. I mean, he, he got some playing time, but he didn't actually start until the fifth game of the season to where he racked up that 1,367 yards. Pretty amazing. Seven nothing balls. Louder milk. The senior is set to kick it away. Two deep men are Duran and Court and Alex English. And English has the football. And looks to move it ahead. Good run back. Breaks the tackle. Got the kicker to beat. And Louder milk slowed him up just enough. And he is brought down at the 44-yard line. 
Fred White able to make the stop. Inside lack, inside backers for Wyoming. In this case, number 54, Herman White, vacates the premises, and as a result, Lewis is able to cut, make the good move in the open field, leaving Lenning behind. And of course, as we pointed out, Steve, you just can't arm tackle a man who squat 700 pounds. So there's the scoring drive. Todd, how significant for Wyoming to, to get something out of this possession, field possession, I would think, at least. Kick return certainly helps. Man in motion, play action. Here's Stoner, scrambling away from heavy pressure. Finds the man wide open. It's Chris Rye, and he is forced out of bounds inside the Tennessee 40. We're set for an update. Here's Reese Davis. Steve, another Mountain West team, Colorado State, facing Colorado. Mike Machete firing, and Rick Kroll sitting right there, takes it all the way back. And so far, half of Fisher DeBerry's guaranteed Mountain West wins. It's pretty good. Colorado State's up, but you've got the other half. Thanks, Reese. That's right. Fisher DeBerry picking uh, Wyoming to win this football game today. We'll see how he does it prognosticating. 19 yards on the play, down to the volunteer 38-yard line. The pass worked last time. Here's Stoner looking to pass again. He's going to keep it, and he is forced out of bounds, and a flag flies. Looks like a late hit will be called. Darwin Walker the hit on Stoner. No doubt about it. Situation where a defender always wants to hit the quarterback, but he has to be cognizant of the fact that the field is only so wide, and sure enough, once he hit the chalk and he hits him, the official was right on top of it. The crowd doesn't like it, but it's a good call. After the play was over... There was a late hit out of bounds against the defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. I don't think it was actually in anger or anything. He just couldn't slow up right there. He's out of bounds and he pushes him. That's a good two yards out of bounds and a good call by the official who was right on top of the play. Bottom line is Wyoming's moved to the Tennessee 20 here. And he's showing no signs, just going off quietly into the night. Well, the very thing that you pointed out has occurred in this particular series. That is, they get the good kickoff return, get a good play to Brian, a big penalty, and they're in scoring position already. Again, four wide receivers, four Wyoming. Mike Machete firing, and Rick Kroll sitting right there, takes it all the way back. And so far, half of Fisher DeBerry's guaranteed Mountain West wins. It's pretty good. Colorado State's up, but you've got the other half. Thanks, Reese. That's right. Fisher DeBerry picking uh, Wyoming to win this football game today. We'll see how he does it prognosticating. 19 yards on the play, down to the volunteer 38-yard line. The pass worked last time. Here's Stoner looking to pass again. He's going to keep it, and he is forced out of bounds, and a flag flies. Looks like a late hit will be called. Darwin Walker the hit on Stoner. No doubt about it. Situation where a defender always wants to hit the quarterback, but he has to be cognizant of the fact that the field is only so wide, and sure enough, once he hit the chalk and he hits him, the official was right on top of it. The crowd doesn't like it, but it's a good call. After the play was over, there was a late hit out of bounds against the defense. 15 yard penalty, first down. I don't think it was actually in anger or anything. He just couldn't slow up right there. He's out of bounds and he pushes him. That's a good two yards out of bounds and a good call by the official who was right on top of the play. Bottom line is Wyoming's moved to Tennessee 20 here. And showing no signs, just going off quietly into the night. Well, the very thing that you pointed out has occurred in this particular series. That is, they get the good kickoff return, get a good play to Brian, a big penalty, and they're in scoring position already. Again, four wide receivers for Wyoming. Tim Beasley, the lone running back to Stoner's right. They sent a man in motion. That's Brian. Here's Stoner. The first one is Raynock Thompson, but a flag is down. And we will see Stoner under heavy pressure there, unable to get rid of it. Once again, they have to be concerned with the drops of Stoner. He's just not getting back far enough. For the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. As you look into Jay Stoner's eyes, that's something his head coach Dana Dimmel said. In three years as a starter, he's never seen a shred of negativity, fear, or lack of confidence in Stoner's eyes. And he's got a good look at that confidence there. Brings up a first and 15 at the 25 of Tennessee. Some last-minute instructions for Beasley. Again, four wide receivers. We'll see that for most of the game. Here's Stoner under center. Sends a man in motion. Little option to Beasley. Left side cuts up the middle, and he might just be inside the 20-yard line. Pick up of five. 
as the clock ticks under seven minutes to play here in the first quarter. Raynock Thompson on the stop. Adam Goldberg, the pulling tackle, just couldn't get a block. Otherwise, he might have gone the distance. Take a look. He gives himself up. Taking a look at Goldberg downfield, 74. He just can't quite make the block. Beasley does a great job of getting the yardage. Take a look. Watch the blocking out front here. If he's able to get this block, Stoner does a great job of giving his body up. Now take a look. Here comes the block downfield. If he can make this block, who knows? Instead, it's a good enough game. How about this? Looks like five wide receivers now. Stoner out of the shotgun. Quick pass across the middle. Kick and caught. Touchdown, Wyoming. It's Tommy Nash, the senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tipped it to himself, hung on for a 20-yard touchdown. Great call by Manny Metsakis, and let me tell you why. First time in the game, Steve, they go to the five-wide receiver set, and in an opportune time when they in, they're in the scoring zone, he knows he has man-for-man -man coverage, steps back, little slant in, gets him the ball, touchdown. Aaron Elling is on to attempt the extra point, to attempt to tie this baby up. It is up. And it is good. Tied at seven. Well, one of the things here is everybody thought that Wyoming might not have a chance here in Tennessee, but instead, they answer right back with seven points to tie it up. Beautiful. Here we go. Here's the all-22, and here's the situation. Eric Musmoreland, normally an outside backer, has to have Nash, man for man, a wide receiver. Nothing, nobody's in the middle of the field because they have to spread out, spread out because of five wide receivers. That's a mismatch. They get him the ball, and he's able to waltz into the end zone despite the fact that he has the bobble. Great call on the part of Manny Matsakis to bring that in in the green zone. That's the money zone. I know everybody says red. I prefer green. <laughs> Great job of the offensive cognoscenti of the Cowboys. Tough to take a crowd out of a game, especially a crowd of 105,000 like they have here at Neyland Stadium, but Wyoming has done it with a four-play, 64-yard drive and a buck 37. And I guarantee you that John Chavis is with his charges right now on the sidelines trying to figure this out, this five-wide receiver set. Wyoming and Tennessee, and the Vols find themselves in a football game as we approach six minutes to play. Leonard Scott from the goal line carries it out to the 20. 25. He's out over the 30. And he is brought down by Alan Jones. Steve, I mentioned John Chavis. There he is in the booth. I don't think he's very intimidated because, remember, this is the guy who's been dealing with the fun and gun offense in Florida for a very long time. But if for whatever reason there's a player on the Tennessee sideline that overlooked Wyoming for the Florida game two weeks from now, I doubt they are now. First and 10 at the 32-yard line for Tennessee. The Vols said all the right things all week. Whether they meant them or not, we'll have to see. 7-7 football game. Here's T. Martin dropping back to pass. Just narrowly avoided the blind side sack, able to get rid of it. He was looking for Lewis. He was pressured by Robbie Duncan from his quarterback position. Robbie Duncan got a late start. He had his helmet between the one and the seven. If he had been just a millisecond sooner, T. Martin actually had good protection. Take a look. Here he comes on the blitz. He starts a little bit late. There's nobody there to get him. Just at the last minute, he's able to hammer him. But Martin does a good job of getting rid of the ball. Bring up a second down and 10. Duncan, a four-year starter, actually started 31 straight games with an ankle injury. Made a miss the Rice game last year. The give is to us. Not much there, and he is brought back. Forward progress on the play. Jared Jarnigan able to make the stop from the middle linebacking position. Randy Sanders wants to call something here that is going to get them 10 yards and get a first down, but of more significance than that, Steve, is the fact that they want to get the crowd back in this game. The one thing Tennessee doesn't want here is you get a chance to look at the young, very young, going to be 34 this month, Randy Sanders. Remember, he took over for the last game when Randy Cutcliffe went to Mississippi. He took over in the biggest game of his life, national championship game, led them to a victory. Tennessee has called for a timeout there first, and we'll step out. 5.28 to go. Balls are in a ball game in the first. With a third and seven situation for Tennessee at their own 35-yard line. Lewis, the lone player in the backfield. Here's T. Martin to pass. Scrambling out of trouble. 
runs up the middle, breaks it, and he's out long enough for the first down, and he's across midfield. T. Martin, Al Rich, finally got to him. Well, T. T Martin has certainly proven himself not just as a quarterback, but as an athlete. Six foot three, 215 pounds. That's a young man. This is so frustrating because Wyoming has great coverage. They put pressure on him, but Martin is athlete enough to get the ball out to midfield. A big third down conversion, Steve, for the balls. Tennessee comes in with the nation's longest winning streak. 13 games tied with Tulane. Tulane will play on Monday at Southern Miss. From the 50, motion on the line. Looks like John Mathis jumped. We'll see how they rule it. I'm not sure that T. Martin has really gotten his due. I mean, wedged between Jamal Lewis and Peyton Manning, there's a young man that maybe has not accrued the notoriety that he deserves. Offside. On the defense, five yard penalty, the big first down. I mean, as Holly pointed out at the top of the show, when Jamal Lewis went down, he did yeoman work, averaging over 200 yards per game passing, you know, getting a touchdown per game rushing. That's astonishing. And everybody, of course, remembers that national championship game against Florida State when he had those two long bombs. Cedric Wilson has come out and said T. Martin's the best quarterback Tennessee's ever had. Trying to pump up his teammates. Give is up the middle. Pretty good. Fumble, eight fumble. And a fumble. Loose ball. Wyoming has it, and it's Al Rich, the Cowboys' leading tackler for the season to go. He recovers the fumble, and the Cowboys will take over. It appeared, though, it appeared, Steve, that Jared Jarnigan, the Mike, who had been giving great pressure earlier, is the one who was able to strip the ball away from Lewis. Take a look right here at the end of the play. I believe it's 39. Get, that's it. Jarnigan right there is able to strip Lewis of the ball. Rich able to come up with the recovery. Big turnover for the Cowboys. Todd, that was some of the question with Lewis. We talked about a lack of contact in the preseason. How would he handle being hit for, by guys in the other uniform, or would he cough up the ball? Wyoming, first and 10 from their own 38. And a timeout has oh, been called. Boy, that's tough. It really is, and here's why, Steve. You've got to, you want to keep that momentum. You want the people on the field. You don't want to give them a chance to regroup and talk about it. That's unfortunate because Stoner didn't have exactly what he wanted on the field. Downstairs to Holly Rowe. Guys, Jamal Lewis has been out of play all of last season, and he said that he's a little rusty carrying the ball. During the scrimmages, he was stripped twice, had two fumbles. It's been a problem. It's something he's got to address, especially with this early fumble here in the game. Some, something to note here, Steve, which is very interesting, is you get a look, look at a uh, disturbed Jamal Lewis. Take a look next time when he comes back out. Does he have the bare hands? Does he have the gloves or the other way around? Because so many times you've watched in a game, a guy drops the ball, and if he's wearing gloves, suddenly he takes them off. Or if he's not wearing gloves and drops the ball, suddenly he puts them on. You see the numbers on Lewis. I mean, they are spectacular. His first carry right out of the box went for 21 yards. He ripped off a 25-yard touchdown. But now he's got an FR, a uh, fumble rather, in his stat line as well. Let me go out on a go out on a limb here, Steve, and I'm just going to say I don't think they're going to bench him. <laughs> no. He's been uh, outstanding. He's the closest thing I've seen in college to an old teammate of mine with the Raiders, a fellow by the name of Vincent Bo Jackson, Heard combining that size and speed. He's not as fast as Paul, but he's very alike in the way he runs and maybe even a little niftier. We'll see if that timeout early here in the first quarter cost Wyoming. Yeah, with that complicated offense, not really surprised to see some miscommunication. It's a fake, and they give around the end to Kofi Shuck. And we told you earlier, some 40% of the handoff will go to wide receivers like Shuck. That one for seven yards. Interesting, a little bit of misdirection. I, I had mentioned earlier that Tennessee's team speed might make up for that, but Shuck does a nice job of getting around Contain. Man in motion for Wyoming. Play action. Here's Stoner looking to pass. Avoid one tackler. And just got it away with Billy Ratliff in his face. Ratliff might have gotten a piece and deflected it away. You mentioned earlier, Steve, something of consequence here where Wyoming is concerned. Three redshirt freshmen on the offensive line. Stoner, if he'd have had the time, had a number of open receivers downfield, but he just isn't getting the time. If these young people can grow up in a hurry, this could be a very competitive football game. There's a lot there, right? So you got this complicated offense to begin with, coupled with three red shirt freshmen. There's an awful lot to understand. This is a third down and three from the 45-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Stoner on play action. Hit again, ball is tipped in the air and caught. Boy, that's huge. Ralph on the reception as 
fluttered up in the air, and I think they're just beyond the first down marker. A six-yard gain on the play. Steve, I can guarantee you that Brock Ralph was not the intended receiver, but something that has to be wearing on the offense for Wyoming is the fact that Stoner is getting hit every single play. Misdirection, he rolls left. From the backside, he gets hammered. There's Ralph able to come up with the ball, even though it was a pop-up. Very fortunate for Wyoming, but Steve Stoner can't keep taking this beating. Under center, got Beasley behind him, sends a man in motion, takes the both players. Here's Stoner, cross the middle, complete great grab, avoiding the hit is Willie King. Actually took the hit and hung on, and then was brought down. Pickup of 17. And this is something that excites a team, and here's why. Inevitably, when a wide receiver cuts to the middle of the field, sometimes he gets those alligator arms, and he's afraid to get hit. Instead, he makes an outstanding catch in traffic, takes the hit, and gets the extra yardage. Wyoming's got to be pumped up. I mean, they're playing even in this football game with the mighty defending champs of Tennessee. First and 10, 33-yard line of the Volunteers. Beasley, the lone setback. They send a man in motion that route. And the give is to Beasley, not much there. It's a good call, though, and here's why. you got to give Stoner a little bit of the rest. He can't keep coming back three- and five-step drops and keep taking that beating. They have to get something established, even if, even if it is two- and three-yard gains. That gives him a chance to rest, gives him a chance to reevaluate things on the field, and not bad numbers there either, Steve. And the other side of that, I would think, is keeping the defense honest. At least they got to prepare and play for that as well. Brings up a second and eight now from the 31. They send the man in motion. This time they do give to Beasley. And he is stopped again. John Henderson, the left tackle on the stop. Well, this is where he's going to have to throw. A misdirection isn't going to mean anything. Injured in the secondary for Tennessee. Looks like Eric Westmoreland is the player down. They can ill afford to lose. They're starting left linebacker. Not only is the starting left linebacker a great rush guy and a good cover guy, one of the leaders on their defense. Wes Morland is the guy who was second on the team in tackles last year with 79. He also had 11 tackles for loss. Another one of those 6'3", 215, 220-pound guys that can run all over the field and hit you. He remains down on the field, getting medical attention. Oh, he's going to be all right. Well, there's great golf coming up for you. North of the border, the PGA Air Canada Championship. That's tomorrow right here on ESPN2 at 3 o'clock Eastern. The final round from beautiful B.C., British Columbia, and the leaderboard features Fred Funk. He is your leader by one stroke. Mike Weir is also in the competition, two strokes off the base. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. I'd love to see Mike Weir win that. What was, the, what was the turn? Was it the Buick? I'm sorry, a couple of weeks ago when he was head-to-head -head with Tiger Woods and went into that last round and shot an 80. Yeah, I felt really badly for him. It'd be great for him to come back and win one. Nice to see somebody else win besides Tiger once in a while. <laughs> Coming up on two minutes to play. First quarter action. Steve Levy, Todd Christensen, Holly Rowe from Neyland Stadium, Knoxville, Tennessee. This is 39 from the 32. Here's Stoner moving to his left and throwing across his body. He completes it to Beasley, who is not shy of the first down. Well shy. Now, don't be surprised here, Steve, because this is an awkward situation. They are bringing in their kicker. I was surprised here because... Now you're going to be looking at about a 51, 52-yard field goal and minus the 7,200-foot altitude of Laramie. This could be a difficult proposition. Aaron Elling is coming on for what would appear to be a 52-yard field goal attempt. He hit a 62-yarder in a scrimmage, but again, that is at altitude. The snap, the place, it's up. And wow. It is good. Wow! And with one minute and seven seconds to play here in the first quarter, Wyoming is leading at Tennessee. You know what, Steve? Every time I hear of somebody that has the big leg in practice, I always say, yeah, yeah, big deal. Let's see you prove it. Now when you hit that for 52, I'm thinking that that makes it for about 58 or 59. I mean, he had a tremendous leg. 
They are in shock here in Knoxville. Well, the snap is good and the hold is down. And take a look at the reaction of Allen. He knows he's hit it well. Now he looks up. And look, how, look, look at when it crosses the bar. Look at that. It goes all the way to the first row of the stands, for goodness sake. Man, he's got a great leg. 10-7 Wyoming. Tennessee is a state of shock right now. We got the sense in talking to the Wyoming people, they didn't say this, but we got this sense that quite frankly, they would be happy with a, a close loss. A good effort today, something they could take some momentum into their next game and the rest of their schedule. Right now, they're doing more than just that. Well, you know what, though? There, there were some other individuals, and when we talked with Dana DeMille, which we did at length, there, there was no fear in his voice. He seemed like that this was well within the realm of possibility. Aaron Elling. But then again, you know, I'm thinking to myself, like you, you young guys in your 30s, man. <laughs> you have all sorts of dreams. Lots of time. Elling is just connected from 52 yards away to give the Cowboys the lead. Shows off that strong leg again to Leonard Scott, who starts two yards deep from his end zone. And he's able to carry it out to the 25. And we will check in once again with Reese Davis. Well, Steve, Gary Barnett's debut for Colorado is being spoiled by this man, Kevin McDougal, bursting through the middle, 59 yards. This guy had 94 yards on his first three carries, and the Rams are up 14-0 on the buff. Reese, thanks a lot. Kevin McDougal, that might be the fastest fullback in the nation. I mean, usually when you think of a fullback type, he's a between-the-tackles, no-move guy. McDougal is an outstanding rusher. He's a thousand-yard guy. Well, we mentioned Fisher DeBerry. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> right now, he's laughing. It's early. Colorado State and Wyoming. Completion. T. Martin fires for the first down. Caught by Cedric Wilson for 12 yards. Trent Campbell on the stop. A good call by Randy Sanders as Jamal Lewis tries to regroup a little bit. As you pointed out, the two Travises last year, or Travis squared, as we pointed out, rushed for nearly 1,400 All yards side. in the absence. On a defense, penalty refused. In the absence of that man, Jamal Lewis. But I don't think they make any secret that Lewis is their guy. But what I was saying about Sanders' call is he didn't want to do something predictable. Want to move the sticks, which they did on one play. Now they're feeling a lot better about themselves on the offensive side. Henry and Bartholomew are the backs for Sanders' offense as we go first and 10 for the 38. They send a man in motion. And they give it to Henry, the tailback. And he is gang tackled just out across the 40-yard line. Pick up of four on the play. Quabina Pepra on the stop along with Pat Hirsch. Now be bold right here, Steve. Tell me that you predicted that Wyoming was going to be ahead after the first quarter. You know, I hate to say it, but we did talk about it on the ride over. <laughs> sure you did. Well, right about now, Dana Dimmel has to be feeling pretty good about himself and his troops. We've played one quarter. Tennessee defending their home in their national championship. They find themselves trailing to Wyoming by three after one. We're set to start quarter number two from New Orleans Stadium. Second and six from the Volunteers' 42-yard line. And a quick hit is complete from Key Martin to Cedric Wilson. And with that, we go downstairs and join Holly. Guys, Tennessee linebacker Eric Westmoreland has a sprained left ankle. It is not likely that he will return to the game at all. He's devastated. He's got a towel, his head in his hands on the bench. Very disappointed young man. Thanks, Holly. He's Todd mentioned before, second on the team last season with 79 tackles, a huge part of that offense, or rather defense, the defense that lost Al Wilson in the middle there. But I also mentioned I didn't think it was that serious. That surprised me. On first and 10, from the 49. The give up the middle, breaking tackles is Travis Henry, and he's finally stopped at the 35 by Matt Lenning. A gain of 15 once again, Holly Rowe. As you'll notice in the last couple of plays, Jamal Lewis has been on the bench. He was exhausted after his first long touchdown run. It took him a good 10 minutes to really catch his breath fully. That's why we see the fresh legs of Travis Henry and the great full running back staff that they have. Fresh legs will do a great distance here in this second series. 
First and ten at the 36. Martin with Bartholomew and Henry behind him. And gives again to Henry. He stopped just past the line of scrimmage and pushed back for a short game. You know, Holly makes a good point that while we mentioned the fact that Lewis obviously looks so great in the first series, his fitness has to be questioned because there's a difference. Steve, so many guys go out and they run and they lift weights and they bench 400 and run 4-4 and assume that means you can play football. It's a different kind of condition that you have to play football. You can't simulate the collisions. And so until you're out there doing it, and the excitement of the game. It just isn't the same. And Holly, that was very astute to point out the fact that Lewis, his tongue was wagging there for a while. And the decision for the coach, you don't want to play him too much, chance of getting him hurt, but you want him to be in proper football condition. There's a fine line there. They fake. Martin keeps it around the end. And he'll keep it. It's a good block. And it's knocked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Dante Stallworth had the big block before Robbie Duncan finally forced him out. A gain of 11 for T. Martin. And we check in with Reese Davis. Steve, down at the Swamp for Tennessee is going to be in a couple of weeks. Doug Johnson looking to move the Gators. They were up, and Eric Nunley steps in there and picks it off for Western Michigan. He's going to take it to the house that cut it to 28-20. And if you can show that on that jumbotron there in Knoxville, you'd get a roar like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. He's right about that. They debut the Jumbotron here at Neyland. 44 by 28 and a half feet. Everybody's talking about it. Oh, not much good news here so far for the home team in Orange. Pick up there. On uh, the carry gain of six. You know, Travis Henry the carry there. Yesterday, Steve, when we, were, when we came down here, they had the Jumbotron on and he played the entire game between Florida last year. Remember that? Yeah, and we were laughing last night on last broadcast night. television That's here right. as well in town. They showed that game, not the national championship win, <laughs> right, the, the game against, against Florida. Florida. Yep. They will head down to the swamp in a couple of weeks, a place they haven't won since 1971. Second and four. Right side, ball looks like it's loose. Who's got it? Wyoming says they do. <laughs> And the Cowboys have it. Adrian Hill has it. But here's the impressive thing about it. Here's the impressive thing about it, Steve, is that on the tackle, the ball is stripped twice. Not only is it stripped, take a look. Okay, comes in. There's the strip. Now it comes out. Now it comes out. Goodbye, Van Emmerich. But then he battles him again and re gets the ball out one more time. And as a result, able to come up with it is Rich. Great play by Wyoming. Second Great effort by Ben Emmerich. Sorry, top second turnover of the game by Tennessee. Wyoming has yet to turn it over. Let's see what the Cowboys do with it on first and ten from their own 21-yard line. The give to the left side to John Jennings, and he is brought down. And there's Van Emmerich on the sideline there after he stripped the football on the fumble. That's a huge play and very persistent on his part to get the ball. One of the difficulties I need to point out here, see with the wide receivers running, is that instead of being dependent upon guys who normally block, i.e. tackles and guards to get you hold, you're dependent upon wide receivers. And wide receivers, as a rule, are notoriously not great blockers or pass catchers. So that, those wide plays are going to be difficult, as I pointed out, against that Tennessee secondary. Van Emmerich, by the way, is a three fumble recoveries last season. Second in the whack in that department. He's not a recovery, but he causes the fumble. Here's Stoner under pressure, and he is dropped at the eight-yard line. Dropped by Sean Ellis of the Volunteers. That looked like one of those plays like a former Tennessee defensive end used to make a hold on him or Reggie White. Here's what I mean, and that is that Ellis actually gets blocked. Watch him come from this side of your screen. He's going to get blocked, but with one hand, he's so strong, he's able to bring Stoner down to the ground. Second sack of the game for the Volunteers, and Stoner's been hit a ton more times beyond just the sacks. Clock is moving. 11-10 left, second quarter. 10-7, Wyoming. They have the football deep in their own territory. This is third and 22 from the nine-yard line. And they get the safe play, the handoff to Jennings, and he is stopped. He's up there by the middle linebacker. 
linebacker Dominique Stevenson for no game. See the fumble? Too bad that they had done their quick kick earlier. They weren't going to surprise them. Third and 22 down on their own 7-8 yard line. That would have been the time to go with a quick kick. Instead, now they're going to be prepared and more than likely come up with outstanding field position. Maybe a turn of events here for Tennessee. Wyoming, three plays. They lost a total of 13 yards in that series. Back to put it away for Wyoming is Tom Waring kicking in his first collegiate game on his 22nd birthday. From the checkerboard end zone, gets it away. The deep man backboard is Eric Parker, takes a Tennessee bounce, and the Volunteers, when we come back, will operate first and 10 from the Wyoming 41, but trailing. They have had little to cheer about so far. They find the Volunteers down 10-7. First and 10 at the 41 of Wyoming. Off a good defensive stop in a series. They look to get something going on offense. Here's Martin going across his body. Body. It was intended for Cedric Wilson and defended by Robbie Duncan. And he was lucky that Duncan didn't go the distance with that. He overthrew that rolling to his left. Duncan had nothing but grass in front of him. You pointed out three-year starter coming into this game very dependent upon his coverage skills because of the way they attack things defensively they leave their corners out on an island as Lenning is counting how many fingers Matt Lenning is such a key to this Wyoming defense normally the backup free safety he was moved over to the strong safety for this football game rather the cornerback position he's made five stops already we still got ten minutes left in the first half well, when, you're, when your safety is making stops like that, that seems to indicate that your front seven isn't necessarily doing the job. And when you have to stop that freight train, 235 pounds of 4-4 speed with that 10-yard head start, boy, that's, that's, that's going to be tough on your head. Here's the hit. It's actually a block, and you can see the head gets snapped back. Nothing dirty about that play as the wide receiver, Dante Salworth, puts a lick on it. You mentioned the safeties making the stops. Rich led the team in tackles last year and solo tackles. That can't be a good thing year after year. Here's second and ten from the 41. Here's Martin off the play action. Rolling left, being chased. Kicks his man. Good play by Martin on the run, slightly behind his receiver, but the tight end, John Finlayson, able to make the grab. Rich was there on the stop, gain of nine. Terrific catch, considering the fact that Finlayson is a guy who doesn't catch the ball very often at all. They don't go to their tight ends much. T. Martin a little bit behind on the throw. The youngster able still to come up with the grab, have them up with a very makeable third and one and a half. Come up from the 32-yard line. Finlayson, the tight end for Tennessee. Out of the eye. Here come the ball. Martin will give it to Lewis back in the second and he breaks it. Dead by touchdown. Volunteers back on top. Jamal Lewis now has a 25-yard touchdown and that one goes for 32 yards and the score. The Volunteers up by three and it looks like they will go for two. tackling on the part of Wyoming. They're going to go for one here, Steve, but the thing is is that Wyoming at the point of attack, Lewis able to run through some arm tackles. And as Holly pointed out, if he doesn't have very good conditioning coming into this game, I guarantee you that this is going to help. Loudermilk puts it up and through, and Tennessee is back on top, and the crowd is back in the football game. Jamal Lewis, Four yards shy of 100 in the game. He's already got two scars. The ball's on top. The 102nd home opener in Tennessee volunteer history. They've gone to 78, 19, and 4 in those home openers. Last year's home opener was the overtime win over Florida here. And now they've opened up a 14-10 lead. Jamal Lewis gives, and he takes away. He had one fumble earlier. And two touchdown runs. The Volunteers a 14-10 lead. Alex English carrying it out for Wyoming, but not much there. He stopped shy of the 15-yard line and stopped by Mickey Allen. Josh Tucker at the point of attack does a great job caving people down. Take a look at the right tackle and people come down. The problem here, of course, is tackling the secondary. This is a large hole for third and one, but there in the hole is going to be a miss. Here's going to be a miss, and then coming over here is going to be a miss. 
Take a look, Lewis. There's one, two, three people that can't bring him down. As we pointed out, all that time in the weight room certainly pays off as both Rich and Duncan cannot bring down the nine carry for 96 yard number 31, Jamal Lewis. The numbers on Lewis there, four yards shy of 100 for the football game. The Vols in games that Lewis rushes for over 100 yards, they're 10 and 0. There's a Wyoming player down on the field. It's Rich Sweeney, the free safety. See, we were talking about the fact when Lenning came out and Rich and Duncan, the fact that clearly, although the WAC has some quality players, rather the Mountain West Conference has some quality runners out there, I don't think they've ever seen anything like Jamal Lewis. You mentioned the WAC. This is the first year of the new Mountain West Conference that Dana Dimmel's Cowboys are playing in with seven other former WAC schools. Utah, San Diego State, Air Force, BYU, Colorado State, New Mexico, and UNLV. Dimmel said he thinks 6-1 will win it for you. 5-2 will get you the tiebreaker in that new Mountain West Conference. Injured player. Apparently he's okay. Here's Stoller. First and 10 for Wyoming. He's got plenty of time. Had a man. Excellent defense there. As Cliff Fry was on it. Fred White was all over him. Able to make the stop. Good coverage by White because he's downfield at least four or five seconds having to run with his man. Able to break it up. Stoner able to break contain. And that necessi necessitates great coverage downfield. White able to get up with it. Brings up a second and ten at their own 16-yard line. Screen left is complete from the And the Cowboys are forced out of bounds. Cliff Bry on the reception there. Forced out the 27-yard line. Good, good quarterback pressure there by Darwin Walker. The Vowels pick up of six. Cliff Bry, a native of Lincoln, Nebraska. Redshirt freshman we hadn't heard a lot about. But we've seen an awful lot of him here, both running and catching the ball for the Cowboys. It'll bring up a third and four now at the 22-yard line. We heard no huddle, no huddle, no huddle. They've been huddling an awful lot. They have what Cincinnati used to refer to as the sugar huddle. Somewhere in between the two. No huddle and a huddle. Spending half the time. Here's Stoner. Right down at the 15-yard line. And the crowd on their feet will overstreet on the sack. His second of the game. Third by the volunteer defense. Well, this is what's just been happening for Wyoming. And Jay Stoner is just a, a courageous young man. Take a look what's been happening here. He's been hit at least a half dozen times. That was actually a completion, believe it or not. Gets hit there. Knocked down again. That's a touchdown pass right there. Roll, even rolling out is not going to help as he gets spiked with the one hand. And, of course, he just got dropped there. On a fourth and ten. Tom Waring in punt formation. Oh, that's a low kick. Takes a bit of a bounce for the Cowboys and out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Goes for a 39-yard punt for Tom Waring. Tomorrow, over on ESPN at 1 p.m. Eastern, it's NASCAR action for you. The Winston Cup Pepsi Southern 500. Jeff Gordon is the defending champ. Gordon will challenge current NASCAR points leader Dale Jarrett. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network. Go.com. So, uh, uh, Earnhardt and Labonte having lunch now? Boy, that was a wild race there. <laughs> What's it is? Didn't, didn't make friends there. You're not racing if you're not rubbing and trading paint and all those great expressions? I guess. Gotta do whatever it takes. It's like football, right? That dumb right. Here's Martin off the play action. Looking deep. Got a man. And he's got it. Touchdown, Cedric Wilson. 55 yards, and all of a sudden, it's all Tennessee. This place has exploded into a sea of orange.
a 10-7 Wyoming lead has disappeared into a 21-10 lead by the defending national champs. Back on that throw, you're right, was a thing of beauty. That was touch. And we'll show it to you again just after the kick. Lowderman kicks it off. Chris Fry is backboard for Wyoming. Finds the scene ahead of the 30-yard line. Cuts back, and he's brought down at the 38-yard line. So Wyoming will start with good field position. A 36-yard return by Bry. One of the things that made this throw particularly impressive, Steve, is not simply the fact that he's able to air it out. But take a look at the pressure. Brian Van Emmerich right in his face and drops him. Take a look at the hit he takes. We've been talking about Stoner's courage. He just gets whacked. And Wilson, able to cut up the field, beats Jones on an out, and you can't throw a ball any better than that. 55 yards in the air and on the money. Wyoming will go with a new quarterback here. It is Matt Swanson, the sophomore from Boise, Idaho. And he's off and running immediately, and he's forced out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Well, we talked about the fact that Stoner couldn't keep putting up with the beating that he was taking, and I think really that's what this is. I don't think he's necessarily hurt. He's just beaten up, and he needs a break. The Vols have struck with the big play. They've done it quickly. Two touchdowns and a buck 32, but their three scores, runs by Lewis of 25 and 32 yards, and then a 55-yard pass play for that last touchdown. There are the numbers on Swanson for his career. The sophomore backing up. Jay Stoner, the junior. They send the man in motion. And they give it off to Beasley. And he is stopped as they cross midfield. A pickup of four. And we check in once again with Holly Rowe. Right now, the team physicians and trainers are evaluating Jay Stoning. They're having a lengthy conversation. It looks like there's a problem with one of his collarbones on his left arm. He's holding it very stiffly against his chest right now. They're going to evaluate him and see if he can go back in. I'll let you know. All right, Holly, thanks. Keep us posted on that. Second and six now. They're inside Tennessee territory at the 47-yard line. Matt Swanson goes 6'2", 195 pounds. And he's looking to pass. It's picked off by Dwayne Goodrich. Goodrich has speed, and he shows it down the right sideline. And instead of going out of bounds, he goes for more. Finally drops at the 35, and all of a sudden, it's all Tennessee. Steven, Steven, fairness to Swanson, it's a situation where if you're not the number one quarterback, you're not getting a lot of repetitions. His timing is off. He threw that ball right to Goodrich. There is a flag on the play. We'll see if they bring it back. A 34-yard return if it stands for Goodrich. Probably, it looks like it might have been a clip at the end. Swanson wasn't pressured, had a good play action fake, but he just threw it right to it. During the return, it was a blocking back by Tennessee. That's a 10 yard penalty and a first down for them. Dwayne Goodrich, a potential All American, is with them on the slant route, but look, it's just completely overthrown. Goodrich has the nice return. The last interception Goodrich made was for 54 yards and a touchdown. That was at the Fiesta Bowl, where he was named defensive MVP for Tennessee. First and 10 for the Vols at their own 49-yard line. Here's Martin moving to his left. Finally complete. And a flag is down as well. Cedric Wilson on the play for 13. Wilson already three catches for 74 yards prior to that completion if it stands. And Deion Grant is in the game, the man that we talked about, the possibility of going both ways. Champ Bailey, Charles Woodson, Deion Sanders, the precursors to that. Interesting. Wilson was really against Grant coming over as a wide receiver. He said, guys in our position, we can do that, sort of pumping up his teammates. But, uh, very talented player. Illegal formation, only six men on the line against the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. That might have been Grant, maybe he was confused. <laughs> you know, one of the things here, though, is that they've been spoiled with so many great wide receivers here. Carl Pickens, Stanley Morgan, goes on and on. Peerless Price, Marcus Nash. 
they've had so many good ones and right now I think one of the reasons they're doing that is that I'm not sure Phil Fulmer feels like he has a guy of that caliber they have been praising David Martin throughout we have not heard much from him tonight the junior from Virginia here's Martin a little spin around completes the pass and there it is to Dion Grant a catch actually goes for a loss though of three yards and we send it back down to Holly guys Wyoming beginning to be decimated by injuries right now free safety Matt Lenning and Rich Sweeney his backup are out after taking hard knocks to the head they're gonna sit them for a while and let them get back into the game when their head clears the worst news though Jay Stoner the quarterback is going to leave the game and go have x-rays on his left shoulder he probably will not return devastating blow for the Cowboys all right, Holly, thanks. You know, we talked about the three redshirt freshmen, this complicated offense. We're throwing a backup quarterback now for Wyoming. Pretty tough situation for them. Although not on defense, where they just come up with a sack there of T. Martin. Patrick Chukwura, the bandit, able to make the sack a loss of eight on the play. Ban bandit position is where this man gets to go wherever he wants if he can find something. Take a look at Chukwura. Here he is as the defensive end, cutting up field with the arm under move. He is not going to let T. Martin out of his sights. Nice move by the 229-pounder from Irving, Texas. Chuck Worrell led the club in sacks last season with seven and tackles for losses. He picks up one there. Third and 27. And Tennessee runs the football. It's the fullback, Philip Crosby, on his first carry. Brian Van Emmerich on the stop for Wyoming. Good defensive stop there for the Cowboys, but as Holly pointed out, this is really a tough situation if you're a backup quarterback. As I pointed out during the week, you didn't practice as much as maybe you would, of course, if you were that man, Stoner, getting all the repetitions. And suddenly, your first game experience is against the defending national champions in front of 106,000 hostile people. That's a tough gig, Holmes. John Jennings is back deep for Wyoming. We'll see what they can do with this football. The puck from David Leverton gets it away. play there by Jennings no fair catch takes the hit and he is dropped inside the 25 by Bernard Jackson 39 yard punt zero yards on the return coming up just as soon as we get you to halftime in some three minutes and 44 seconds of football time of course it's halftime report football highlights Notre Dame and Michigan Lou Holtz's debut and Florida struggling all that coming up at halftime you're on ESPN2. Michigan, they had better than 111,000 today at the big house. Wow. A little friendly battle going on between Michigan and the folks here at Tennessee. Each stadium, they keep adding more seats to try to have the bigger capacity than the other. Look at how many sweeps you can add. Here's the backup center guy, Matt Swanson. And he is sent down to the turf by Darwin Walker, his second sack of the game. Just a tough situation for Wyoming now. We mentioned the youth on the offensive line, now a second-string quarterback. They're going to have to do something to get the rush off, but, of course, if Wyoming wants to get back in this game, they're going to have to throw. Does Wyoming, do you think Wyoming has a conventional offense in place, or they are 100% this run-and-shoot wing system they've been going, the stoner, I do, heads off. The dancers who run here, this is their offense. Looking for a timeout, and he gets it. Tennessee with a 21-10 lead. Approaching three minutes to play here in the first timeout, Wyoming. Welcome back to Knoxville, Tennessee. Steve Levy, Todd Christensen, alongside Holly Rowe. Second quarter has been great for Tennessee in their championship season last year. They outscored the opposition 126 to 37, and they're picking up where they left off. Remember, they trailed 10-7, and now the 21-10 lead, and make it another sack. Fifth sack of the game already for Tennessee. D'Angelo Lloyd that time gets the sack on Matt Swanson. Now, Tennessee is probably going to take a timeout because they want to get the... Two years for a quarterback to learn his offensive system. Jay Stoner picked it up quickly, but Matt Swanson may not be so lucky learning his system. The sock is coming over from D2 Emporia State, where he was the head coach. 
And it worked there. It's not working here in this second quarter. Nate Scott on the carry. He listed fourth on the depth chart for Wyoming. Darwin Walker on the stop there. And Raynock Thompson was very smart. He sprinted right to the official to call timeout. He didn't want any time to bleed off the clock to give his offense one more chance to get the ball in the end zone after the punt. The offensive line for this Wyoming offense has been was so successful in each of the last two seasons, allowing just 11 sacks in each of the last two seasons, but they probably weren't up against a, a front seven like they're seeing today against Tennessee. Last week when I uh, happened to watch a little of the game between Louisiana Tech and Florida State, they mentioned the fact that collectively on that de defense, they had an average 40 speed in the 4-5 to 4-6 range. I don't know if Tennessee is close to that, but certainly you have a number of guys, particularly in the secondary, that are 4-3, 4-4 four, four guys. And up front, you've got 4-7, four, 4-8 four, guys. And frankly, those kind of people don't necessarily populate the Rocky Mountains, unfortunately, certainly not in man. Wyoming set to punt. Just about on the end line is the punter, Tom Waring. 2.41 left. Here in the first half, it's 21-10 in favor of Tennessee. He is on the end line. Eric Parker is back deep for Tennessee. No shot, Francis. Waring just a good play to get it away. And it's not a bad punt either. It takes a Wyoming bounce, but Parker picks it up. And Tennessee will operate there, first and 10, from the 43 of the Cowboys. One other thing we need to mention here, Steve, is the fact that while while the Wyoming offense clearly has struggled and the Tennessee defense has been outstanding, the Wyoming defense has spent an awful lot of time on the field, and you have to be aware of the fact that certainly the weather here with the heat and humidity very different from what they experienced in Laramie. It was uh, some 90 degrees throughout the day here in Knoxville, and game time temperature 81 degrees. It's cooled off a bit. Probably a lot hotter, though, on that field for Wyoming, especially. First and 10 out to 43. Travis Henry is behind T. Martin. Martin, all sorts of time, Swoops up the middle, and he is thrilled. A big hit there by Herman White as the helmet of Martin goes flying. Well, inevitably, that looks a little worse than it is. As you can see, the T. Martin's not the worst for wear. Quarterbacks are notorious for just snapping the one part of the chin strap. Remember the old days of Sonny Jurgens didn't even have a chin strap. <laughs> so, you know, he comes down. Here's the slide trying to prevent the hit. There it is. Helmet to helmet, and it comes flying off. And I'm certain that Martin is grateful for the fact that this is an era where they do wear helmets. You're telling me that looks worse than it actually is, right? Yeah. Looks bad. Travis Henry still on his feet and finally knocked out of bounds. Travis Henry. What a gain of 23. One of the impressive things about Tennessee is that their wide receivers do block downfield and block very well. It was pointed out to us by a number of the coaches that they're downfield making blocks. You can see right there, there's Cedric Wilson making a block and of course unable to arm tackle Henry as he cuts up the field and gets that extra yardage. The numbers on Travis Henry. Lewis is 96 yards. Henry now. 46 yards rushing. And here's Martin again. Rolling to his right. To Cedric Wilson. Is he in? Yes. Touchdown, Tennessee. Cedric Wilson, second touchdown of the game. And the Volunteers have blown it open. Steve, one of the things that T. Martin seems to be doing a lot better than he did last year was his accuracy. As pointed out by the statistics, we noted that early on in the season he had a 44% accuracy, went to 62%. And tonight, I'm guessing he's got to be pretty close to that. And he's able to make those throws on the run. Very impressive. Loudermilk is on for the extra point. That two is good. It is all good now here at Neyland Stadium. T. Martin, 8 of 10 for 121 yards and two scores. And Tennessee has opened up a 28-10 lead over Wyoming. T. Martin able to roll out and get outside the contain, and the result then is he has plenty of time. Take a look. He bides his time, bides his time, 
waits for Wilson to get open, and Wilson now just needs to split two beleaguered tacklers to get in the end zone, and that's exactly what he does. You know, I have never wanted a creamsicle so badly. In this heat, with all this orange all over the stadium <laughs> and everybody on their feet, 28-10 in favor of Tennessee. Well, this is why they're the national champs. You know, we're hyping up the fact that it's 10 to 7 after the first quarter. The Wyoming seems to be in this ball game, and Tennessee give them credit. Answers right back with 21 points in the second quarter. Are you disappointed in the start by Tennessee, or did you expect that? Well, I think that if you notice that some of the great teams, for instance, you look at Arizona, who was ranked number four, they didn't start so well. But Florida State, as I recall, was only up 14 7 at half against Louisiana Tech. So that's to be expected. But obviously, that second quarter is a different story. We said expected attendance in excess of 105,000, about 107,597. Third largest crowd ever here at Neyland Stadium. And all of a sudden, they're enjoying it. It's turned in to a volunteer party. It wasn't when they were trailing 10-7. Bubble, ball is loose. And let's see who's got it. Looks like Wyoming recovered the football. Darth. Tisinski on the stop there. We check in with Reese Davis. All right, Steve, while Tennessee's cruising, not so fortunate for Florida against Western Michigan. Robert Stanford plowing in after John Capel had mishandled a kick that made it 31-26, but the Gators have just scored a touchdown moments ago, Johnson to Alex Willis. All right, Reese, thank you. Minute 39 away for more scores and highlights. And around the first full weekend of college football and a holiday weekend. Hope you're enjoying it, and thanks for being with us here on ESPN2. The defending national champs on their way after a solid second quarter. Flag is thrown. The marker on the play. Before the snap, false start on the offense. Still first down. First and 15 now. It is all falling apart for the Cowboys. Loudermilk on for the extra point attempt now. Up, and as you would expect, good. It is 35 to 10 in favor of Tennessee. An 18-yard return by Westmoreland for the defensive score. Well, it's tough when you're in a situation where the defense can pin their ears back and do whatever they want. The ball bounces up, goes right to Westmoreland. He picks it up. So many times you'll see a defensive man have to stumble with that a little bit. Westmoreland shows some great hands, and as a result, he's got himself six points. 28 unanswered points by the Volunteers to open up a 35 to 10 lead. All right, now be straight with me. Have they started now thinking about going to the swamp? 35-10, approaching halftime. Has that thought crept into their minds? You know what, Steve? I, I need to I need to inform you of one of those cliches. And I know that you're a hockey guy, you so you need to understand this. You you know, here's a cliche this guy. This is though. deep right now. Okay. okay. It's not Kierkegaard. All right, it's not Kant. We play them one at a time, okay? Telling me college kids think that way as well? Sure. You're going to enjoy this. 35-10. Off week in between the big game against Florida. And here's Wyoming now. John Jennings on the return. And he is stopped 
at the 26-yard line. And that's where the Cowboys will operate. And they look for, I guess, anything positive here to get something going. Well, again, it's, it, it, you know, when you're, when you're Swanson, you've just got to be shell-shocked. It's not as if you're coming into a game against an inferior opponent. You're coming in against a team that is the defending national champions. And the way they've looked, at least up to this point, arguably still the best team in college football. 35 points on the board for Tennessee, and none of them one-yard touchdowns. 35-yard run, a 25-yard run, a 55-yard pass play, 16-yard pass play, and an 18-yard return of a fumble. And a timeout is called. Wyoming's last of the half. And they look to settle down. I don't think Swanson was, I don't think his center was able to hear Swanson and to make the snap. The ESPN game day crew, they'll be back on the road next Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Fowler, Corso, Herb Street for that authoritative college football studio show. Pitt and Penn State will follow on ESPN at noon. Will the Panthers be able to stop that high-flying Nittany Lion defense led by LeVar Arrington? Tune in and find out. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network Go.com. Second-ranked Penn State Nittany Lions here at the home of the third-ranked, for now, Tennessee Volunteers. First and 10, 26-yard line as the wave makes its way to Neyland Stadium. Double off the snap, recovered by Swanson, and all he could do is fall on top of the football. Dana Dimmel can't be very happy with what he sees out here. Yes, it is the second team, and I understand the frustration. That face says a lot. That face says a lot. Go to college to get an education. He's getting a different kind of education out there today. Yeah, this falls under the heading of College of Hard Knocks, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Second and 15 now. 21-yard line is the line of scrimmage. Swanson sends a man in motion. Thanks to the man in motion and gives it instead to Nate Scott for the quick hitter up the middle. And he is brought down at the 40. Finally, some positive yardage. And a big gainer by Wyoming. Uh, Will Overstreet finally got to him. Pickup of 19 on the play. Good blocking at the, at the point of attack. Everybody went with a wide receiver, and Scott able to come underneath. Get up the field for a nice gain and a first down. Coming up on the final half minute to play of this first half. And a completion and some more positive yardage. Tommy Nash, who has the lone touchdown catch for Wyoming, on the reception there. Well, at this point, the Tennessee defense will be content to give up the five and six yard gains with 26 seconds remaining in the half. And out of timeouts. They'll start second and seven. Clock has stopped. 26 seconds left in this first half. Ball spotted between the 43 and 44 yard line of Wyoming. Swanson out of the shotgun. Three receivers to his right. And Swanson looks left. And he's got a man. It's Scott again. He's forced out across midfield into the Tennessee territory. Clock is stopped with 20 seconds left. One a positive here for Wyoming certainly is the fact that if they can get another 20 yards, the leg of that field goal kicker they have might be able to give a little momentum heading into the locker room. Elling just pumped that one from 52 earlier. On a first and 10 now. Again, Swanson out of the shotgun. Three receivers right, looks left. Now it's like he's lost the football. First man on it, though, is Rob Kellerman, his right guard. Will Overstreet knocked it away. And that just might do it for our first half. And it will. We've hit halftime. And Knoxville, Tennessee. Wyoming had a 10-7 lead after the first quarter. But at the half, we break with the Vols up 35 to 10, and we send it back to Neyland Stadium. Something that stood out about those stats, too, the fact that they averaged nearly 9.8 yards a snap. I mean, that's amazing. In the second quarter, of course, 173 yards to five. Tennessee truly dominated. Wyoming will kick it off. 
Leonard Scott is back for it. Loses it in the end zone, and he'll bring it out. Crosses the five, and just shy of the 10-yard line, Trent Gamble on the stop there. We check in once again. Here's Holly Rowe. Guys, I had a chance to talk with both head coaches as they walked to the locker room. Dana Dimmel says they're not going to give up, although they will do some more vanilla things on offense. They've got to get this young quarterback ready to play because possibly Jay Stoner has a broken bone in his shoulder. For Philip Fulmer, he says that he was very pleased. His only disappointment of the first half was their stupid penalties and their mistakes in turnover situations. He said he thought his defense settled down very nicely and started reading this complicated offense. All right, Holly, thanks. We might not see T. Martin in the fourth quarter if this game progresses the way it has, but he is out to start the third. Sends the man in motion, and he gives to Travis Henry, who is stopped after a short gainer as we open up the second half. T. Martin with a tremendous first half. He pointed out eight for ten. He is truly in command of this offense, and, of course, they've had a number of great quarterbacks at Tennessee most recently, Peyton Manning. But I think they're just going to have to include this young man in that pantheon of greats. I mean, after all, he did deliver a national title. And that the long pass that he connected to Cedric Wilson, that was a thing of beauty. It was right there. Wilson had blown away his man. The football was right there. Here's Martin running right on second and eight. He'll keep it. And he's out ahead. He's got the first down and more as he's forced out by Al Rich. Pick up a 13 for Martin. Great job of play action fake on the part of T. Martin. Watch the direction of some of the white shirts. It looks for all intents and purposes. If he keeps the ball in his hip, now look at the grass in front of him. He thinks about throwing, but then look at he weighs the tight end, says, I'm going to get some yardage here, and sure enough, cuts up the field at 6'3", 215, 4'6". That's the young man that can get some yardage for you. What about Tennessee? Are they looking to establish anything here in the second half or just avoid injuries at this point? No, no, no. I think it's continuity. I think that, that Philip Fulmer has certainly stressed at halftime that you can't rest on your laurels. Get out and keep doing what you've been doing. Again, the man in motion. Here's Martin firing. Left side is complete for Eric Parker. And he's got some extra yardage before finally being knocked out by Trent Gamble. Once again, another good throw on the part of T. Martin. Runs the comeback route, kind of a short out to the 45-yard line, and Parker had a big catch earlier in the first half. I think that one of the things that Tennessee wants to stress here is balance. Obviously, everybody knows what Jamal Lewis can do, but at this point, I think they want to establish those wide receivers. As we pointed out earlier, they don't necessarily have a go-to guy just yet. On first and 10, the 45-yard line now. We'll try the run game. There's Travis Henry. He's just out to about the 47-yard line. Something interesting that I noted, the all-time leading rusher for Tennessee is James Stewart. And you think to yourself, what, four or five, how many thousand yards? 2,890. And I thought to myself, gee, that's not very much in this day and age of, you know, freshman plank. But the thing is, is they've had so many tremendous tailbacks here at Tennessee that rarely do you have just the one guy. They have a number of people that make contributions. Lewis came in 139 yards away from 2,000. He's the eighth Tennessee volunteer to hit that magic mark. That time it's Travis Henry running to the left. Pepra on the stop for Wyoming. So you got people like James Stewart, Charlie Garner, Aaron Hayden, all in the NFL, and a lot of those guys played together. Remember Reggie Cobb, Chuck Webb, and a lot of great players. And, you know, I, I, I know that SC used to be considered tailback view, but you know, they had some pretty good ones here. Tennessee lists themselves in the media guide as wide receiver university. I guess that's subject to discussion. Travis Stevens checks in now on a third and four. Long snap count there, and here's Martin. Looking to his right, and he overthrows his receiver, Wilson. Might have been some miscommunication, as Martin looked like he was going deeper while Wilson was cutting back in. One of the things that happened there is that Jamal Lewis came out of the backfield after a block and he was wide open, but T. Martin wanted the big play. Take a look, here he comes off, does a nice job, a little subtle push in the back, a la, a la Michael Jordan, Byron Russell, if you remember the NBA Finals. The oh, ball was too high. Only Martin's third incomplete pass wow. in the football game, 9 of 12, 141 yards. And Tennessee in a rare punt situation, David Leverton 
We'll but kick it away. Th this is the sort of thing that really annoys the coach. They had to call timeout because they didn't have 11 people on the field, and I'm sure a lot of that is because what you just pointed out. We're, we're punting? What are you talking about? Clock is stopped. We'll step out. 13.02 left to play. Here in the third, Tennessee up by a bunch. A good look at Knoxville, Tennessee. They have a Philip Fulmer Way. Got a street named after Peyton Manning. Street named after Shamiqua Holesclaw as well. Knoxville also the home of the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. Tennessee has 11 on the field now, and David Leverton punts it away to John Jennings, who lets it bounce. Tennessee on it at the three-yard line. All going the way of the Vols with a 35-10 lead. It's a punt of 46 yards. Sunday Night Football debuts, folks, September 12th. The long-anticipated debut of the Cleveland Browns. The new Cleveland Browns will host arch-rival Pittsburgh. What a way to open it up. And then the following night, Monday Night Football kicks off over on ABC. The Dolphins battle the Broncos in the night. Denver retires John Elway's number seven. Sure to be a special night at Mile High. And for more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com. First and ten from their own four-yard line. Matt Swanson, the backup quarterback. And they're just about at the goal line. No indication of a safety yet. You know, Steve, you were mentioning the, you're mentioning the Monday night game, Denver in Miami. Of course, everybody's talking about the the symmetry of how now the starting quarterback, of course, is going to be Brian Greasy. I will say this, very interesting, that in that game, Chris Miller threw for four touchdown passes. I think he's going to be in the mix before it's over. Had a big night. Right, here we go. From the one now. All that noise coming out of the Tennessee end zone. Here's Swanson. Pass complete across the middle. And that'll get him away from some of that crowd. It's out to the 11-yard line. Tommy Nash, who had the touchdown catch in the first quarter for Wyoming, makes that grab, that gain of 16 yards out to the 17-yard line. Raynock Thompson finally on the stop. Steve, it was exactly the same route that he ran for the touchdown. It was just on the other side of the field. Interestingly enough, that five wide receiver set with the empty basket, we haven't seen since then, have we? You think they'd go back to that. Hawk is stopped. A first and ten upcoming from the 16-yard line. Now they wind it up. And here we go. Swanson got Beasley behind him. Changing the play of the line of scrimmage. Heavy rush. Ball is loose momentarily. Tennessee says they have it. Waiting for the official indication, and they do. Flag on the play. Question here would be whether or not the flag on the play, Steve, killed the play. And if it did, then the fumble will be a no-go. Ball was dead before the snap. False start on the offense. See, once again, the difficulty of being a second-string quarterback, not only are you involved in the repetitions during the week, but, you know, to do something as intricate as have to go to an audible when you're not used to it. I mean, that, that, that's, that's a tough game. You see right here, he's trying to audible. Now watch the right guard will jump. And so will Tennessee. And that play's dead right there. Of course, the upside is you hang on to the football. Yeah, that's true. Of course, the downside is first and 15, and you're, you're on an 11-yard line. Clock moving, third quarter. Here's Swanson now. Throwing out to the complete... But not much there, if anything. Completed to Tommy Nash. Dwayne Goodrich on the stop. The secondary of Tennessee has certainly been up to the challenge tonight, Steve. Everybody talked about how unique the offense was and how people were going to be confused. But I think if ever there was a group that has contributed to the defensive success, it has been the secondary. And, of course, John Chavis, we talked about some of the adjustments that he is he had to make one in the second quarter. He certainly made those proper adjustments, holding him to a mere six yards in that stanza. Brings up a second and 13 from the 13-yard line. Beasley 
Now shipped over to the left of Swanson out of the shotgun. The give is to Beasley. And taken down for a loss. Darwin Walker is there on the stop. What's difficult, of course, here is that the running game, they've decided that they're going to be in a pass rush mode. And so if a runner happens to get in the way, that's fine. We'll see if we can get him. It'll be a frustrating situation for Wyoming simply because of the fact that they're not used to the attack sort of blocking that is indigenous to a successful running attack. Darwin Walker piling it on tonight. Five tackles, two sacks. One of the leaders on that defense for the national champion. Third and 16 now at the 10. Swanson. Avoided by Bowser, Tennessee, held momentarily, and it looks like they do recover inside the five-yard line. Tennessee has it. And they'll start first and goal from the Wyoming four. I remember when I was a kid, Steve, there was that little Morton Salt thing, and they had the little girl with the umbrella that said, when it rains, it pours. Well, that's what's happening here to Wyoming. Things just are not going that way. And give credit to Tennessee. That is the 11th play, 11th play for the Tennessee defense that has created negative yardage. That's impressive. I am amazed by what we saw in the first quarter and how it has deteriorated to this point. Balls with the give to Lewis, jumped over the pile, not much there, but he is closer to the goal line. It couldn't all be the wear and tear on Wyoming. Tennessee must have woken up just a little bit as well. Well, there's no doubt, but certainly when you lose your starting quarterback, that can't help. But again, the truth is, and I think everybody's aware of it, is that Tennessee has superior athletes. And I think the weather and the travel and the 107,000 fans are certainly contributing factors. Brings up a second and goal now. From the two-yard line. Martin's still in there. We'll see for how much longer. That was loose. Wyoming says they have it. And they do. Cowboys recover. So they trade fumbles inside the five-yard line. I think that was a situation, too, where Jamal Lewis didn't necessarily get hit. I think that he just dropped the ball. Jeff Boyle, the first man on it, a fumble recovery. It's one thing when you're up at 25 points, and this is okay, but he doesn't necessarily get there. It is. It messed up the handoff. He didn't quite get it. He needed to keep his arms separated, but he wasn't able to do it. And as you pointed out, Boyle able to come up with a recovery. A little anxious reaching for the ball. will take over now. First and ten at their own two-yard line. Swanson sends a man in motion. Gives it to him. Cuts behind him. He's in the end zone. And able to carry it out. Knocked out of bounds at the six-yard line. Cliff Fry came across in motion to carry the football. He was knocked out by Deion Grant. Pick up a five on the play. Good block at the point of attack. And as we pointed out, Bry has made some contributions here that I don't think anybody had anticipated as a redshirt freshman. I'll bring up a second and five now from the seven-yard line. This Swanson getting some confidence now to get a decent series together. Out of the shotgun. Blitz by Tennessee. Picked up nicely, but the pass incomplete. He was looking for Willie King on the play. Andre Lott had the coverage. Good coverage, ball. good coverage by Lott, but certainly a catchable ball for King, and that's got to be frustrating for Swanson because he can put the ball in the money, and he needs his receivers to come up with those balls. Here's the quarterback, Jay Stoner. X-rays on his shoulder. Alert word from the Wyoming sideline on the injuries. Letting's out of the game already. Duran and Court out of the game as well. Wide receiver and a free safety. They get and shy of the 15-yard line. They're forced out. Tim Beasley on the carry there. Once again, update time. Here's Reese Davis. 
Steve Marshall was down 10-6 in the waning minutes in Death Valley against Clemson. And here comes Doug Chapman following his blocks nicely and pounding into the end zone. And Marshall's on top, 13-10. And Tommy Bowden has a minute 10 to save his home opener. All right, Reese, keep us posted. Thanks. Reese Davis back at the ESPN2 College Football Studio. Good quarterback there in Chad Pennington. Very underrated. The intent pass is complete to Willie King. The defender had slipped down Andre Lott, and King was able to make the grab and then some. I think you called it earlier. I think this is a great series for Swanson to get a little bit of confidence because if indeed the injury is as serious as they say, it's not to the throwing shoulder. But still, my guess is that they'd have to keep him out at least a couple of weeks. Good opportunity for Swanson to establish himself. On the schedule for Wyoming, they'll host Weber State out in Laramie. And then they've got their big game, Air Force, at Colorado Springs. And there you see one of the heart and souls of that Tennessee defense. They're not Thompson be taken out of the game. It's Beasley for a bit of a game off the deflection. Beasley able to get a first down. One of the things about the backs in an offense like this is they have to be multi-purpose. They cannot be one-dimensional. Certainly they run, but as the only back back, they have to protect the quarterback. And of course, as much as the ball flies around in this offense, they have to catch the ball too. And Beasley's able to do all three. Brings up a first and 10 now at the 29-yard line. Nate Scott in the game now to the right of Swanson. He stays in the block, and he can use some more blockers because he's going down. Nate Swanson is sacked. Bernard Jackson makes the play. Bernard Jackson came from the backside and the blind side, and he was persistent. He just kept coming despite the fact that he was blocked. Seventh sack of the game by Tennessee. Here comes Jackson from the outside. He gets blocked, pushed out. Then the back comes out to block him, but that's still not enough. Jackson pursued is able to drop Swanson. Good persistence on the part of number 56. Brings up a second and 15 from the 24. Here's Swanson rolling right, gets rid of it. It's complete. Able to break some tackles is Nate Scott, and he gets it ahead to the 30-yard line. Andre Lott, no relation, by the way, despite being a defensive back. Steve, you mentioned, made reference to the upcoming schedule of the Wyoming Cowboys. Of course, the big one there is the 25th at Air Force. Always a tremendous game, and that one could decide the Mountain West title, even though it's so early in the season. You said Laramie is a great place to play and see football. It is indeed. The old war memorial out there. Place David Dimmel was married at 50 yard line. <laughs> Here now, on a third and nine. Swanson throw it, got a man! Great catch! And he was inbounds into Tennessee territory. Wendell Montgomery, the big-time receiver for Wyoming, went up and made a big-time grab for 23 yards. He is a Bolitnikoff nominee, 57 catches for 789 yards last year. But up to this point, we have not called his name, Steve, which shows the difference. Either you got to give credit to Tennessee for shutting him down or the fact that Wyoming just has been unable to find him. That yeah. is their go-to guy, and that was a perfect catch. And his first catch, as you point out, of this football game comes at 640 left in quarter number three. Swanson feeling the press. He was drilled, but able to release it. And they pick up a piece and maybe a late hit there. Holy Kofi cow. Shock. Looked like he was already down, and then some extra contact after that. Andre Lott came over to finish him off. Let's check in with Holly. Guys, the x-rays are in on Jay Stoner, but they are inconclusive. One of the team physicians says he sees a line that looks like a small break in the left shoulder, but one of the other x-rays shows that it's just a gray area, which would not be a break. So they're going to have to wait till they get back to Wyoming, have more extensive x-rays, but he is out and his arm is dismobilized right now. Holly, thanks. The Sporting News ranks Stoner as the 17th best quarterback in the nation. What a blow to the already complicated Wyoming offense as Cliff Fry had the football there. He is stopped by Dion Grant at the 33-yard line. Well, once again, another first down for Wyoming. This drive started at what, the three-yard line? Doing a nice job. Clock is moving. Five and a half to play here in the third quarter. 
case you're just joining us, it was 10 7 Wyoming after the first quarter. It's 35 10 now, and all volunteers. Although a pretty good drive put together by backup quarterback Matt Swanson. Pass had a man just too far in front for Willie King. If he had it, it was six. Well, the flag is down, and they roughed Swanson as if they needed to do that as many times as he's been on his back. So they'll tack on 15 yards there. That's a timing timing pattern he had King right where he wanted but just delivered a little bit too far but they'll still get the first down via the penalty this might be a good time to tell you the third string quarterback for Wyoming it's Brandon Neal a red shirt freshman personal foul roughing the passer on the defense 15 yard penalty first down give you an idea of the violence as we get you give you a chance to see this at full speed and hear it A good call by the official too as Kevin Whiteside was clearly too late. There is a third stringer we were talking about from Great Falls, Montana. Brandon Neal. Swanson still in there for now. On a first and ten. Pitch right to Nate Scott. And he is met by five volunteers. The lead man, Bernard Jackson, on the stop. Deion Grant also able to come up from his safety position and force the play. We haven't had a chance to see him catch the ball, but number seven is certainly a talented young man, even though he's going out now. It appears he might have been shaken up a little bit. It'll bring up a second and 11. Lost to one on the play. Ball spotted at the 18-yard line. If you've got number seven, doesn't that mean you're a star? I mean, that just is, isn't it? I think so. 13th play of this drive. How about that for Wyoming? Here's Swanson, rolling out of trouble, he's got a man! Touchdown! Wendell Montgomery! His first two catches come in the football game in this series. The last one for a touchdown on the 14th play of the drive. An 18-yard scoring strike from Swanson to the wide receiver, Montgomery. A 98-yard drive, 14 plays, impressive. Well, you know what? Let me drop objectivity for a second and say that I'm thrilled for Matt Swanson, especially after the beating he was taking near the end of the second quarter. Got to be happy for that young man to come off the bench and do so well here in this particular environment. Aaron Elling connects on the extra point. Becomes a tad more respectable for Wyoming. It's 35-17. Wendell Montgomery is somebody who, as we pointed out, had been a go-to guy, a lot of catches, but had not been able to get in the end zone. There's the play action. Swanson comes back, able to avoid the rush, drill the ball on the money, and you can see Montgomery able to get behind the safety on the corner out, come back, make the catch, take the hit, and score. And Swanson, hey, that's all right. Guess what? On this drive, that was 7 for 8 for 60 yards. Not bad. You know, I realize it's against NCAA regulations, but if you could remove the second quarter... Wyoming would have a 17-7 lead. A 28-point second quarter for Tennessee. And you add it all up, you get 35-17, and you get Leonard Scott on the kickoff return. Just shy of the 25-yard line, and that's where Tennessee will open. How much longer do you think we'll see T. Martin in the first-team offense for Tennessee? Oh, don't forget, it's 18-point difference. I mentioned 68 yards in the touchdown. Matt Swanson terrific on that drive. I don't think that 35 to 17, even though clearly Tennessee is in control of this game, I'm thinking that he's got another series left. Two backup quarterbacks behind Martin listed on the on the depth chart. One is a redshirt freshman, the other a true freshman. And that's Joey Matthews. He is the redshirted freshman. On first and ten out, the 23. Play action, Martin throwing. He's got him in. Big cushion out there on the right corner. Cedric Wilson on the catch. Good for 16 yards. Flags on the play at the end. That route has been very good to Tennessee. A little but, uh, come back deep out. Inadvertent face mask gets the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Everyone piling up the solid offensive numbers for Tennessee. Cedric Wilson among them. Five catches, 106 yards. 
and two scores that last one again for 16 yards their explosive wide receiver looked to be the go-to guy now with peerless price moving on to the NFL and the Buffalo Bills here's Martin this time gives it off it's Jamal Lewis and we check in with Reese Davis Reese to Death Valley, Marshall and Clemson. Marshall up by three. Clemson under 30 seconds to go. Brandon Streeter fires. Finds Brian Wofford deep in thundering herd territory. This to put it in overtime. No. Chris Campbell hooked that thing out of there and the thundering herd comes out of Death Valley with a 13-10 win. Clemson's got Virginia and Virginia Tech for its next two. Marshall figures moving on up. That's a big win for their program. Big play for Tennessee. They've been all about big plays here in the football game. That time it's Jamal Lewis, already over 100 yards. He'll be well over it now. That goes for 15 to give him 13 carries for 116 yards. Make it 118 yards. He does have two scores to his credit. A lone blemish, a couple of fumbles. The question you might ask yourself here is, what's the point? You know, you're up, you have your star runner. Why not give him a rest and let the other people run? I think it's both a conditioning factor and he wants to reassure himself psychologically he can hold on to the ball, because don't forget, two weeks from now, as we pointed out earlier, away against Florida. Going down to the swamp. That's Lewis again. Not nearly as much for him that time as he tried the right side. Well, whatever it is he's been doing in the weight room and conditioning gets paid off because he just ran through people tonight, especially on some of his big plays. Blocking at the point of attack is outstanding. His cutting is good. He's moving his feet well. He looks quick. He looks fast. And, of course, as I pointed out, he looks powerful. All these people just cannot bring him down. What does that say for the depth of this team? Perfect last year, a national championship, and all of it, or for the most part, all of it without Lewis. They touched on the open. They actually might be a better team than they were when they went undefeated last season. Another pass play and a catch from Cedric Wilson. That for 13 yards, stopped by Robbie Duncan at the 20-yard line. And another first down for the Vols, who are marching again. Philip Fulmer pointed that out. He felt that they indeed could be a better team. Now, whether or not they repeat, that's a different story. Because there are so many different factors. And I think even he would acknowledge the fact that he had some good fortune, although it was pointed out on a radio show that Steve Spurrier said something to the effect that he was quite lucky. And his response yeah. was, what was his response? You, what was it? They said, uh, hey, if we're going to go undefeated again and we're lucky again, we'll take that. <laughs> but once said, better lucky than good. Here's Martin now. Tip ball, and it's behind Wilson. And cr we'll check in again with Holly Rowe. Guys, one of the big questions about this Tennessee team was the receiving core. They were a bit of a mystery to their offensive coordinator, Randy Sanders. He's been waiting for a guy to step up. Well, Cedric Wilson seems to be making that statement tonight. In fact, he spent most of his summer working out with T. Martin. They threw just about every day, and their timing has seemed to really pay off tonight. Holly, thank you. That's a good point. It really has. You pointed out his number is already over 100 yards. Of course, that's always an advantage because quarterbacks and receivers can work on their timing. Defensive people really can. Give it again to Lewis. Keep working him, and he was hit hard and dropped inside the 20-yard line. That time by Jared Jarnigan. One of the exciting things about Lewis, and you could sense that in the crowd here when they groan, is that this is somebody who people give lip service the idea that they're people that can go the distance. And usually those are scat back type people. But this 235-pounder can certainly do that. We talked about Philip Fulmer, and to his credit, not showing he's a know-it-all. He's gone outside for some outside help on how to defend the national championship. He has. He's visited with a number of people. Mike Shanahan was one, and, of course, he utilized the services of Pat Summit right there on his campus to talk about what it takes to motivate people after they've won it all. But we may have to make a long-distance call for that. Here's Martin throwing it away. Although his receiver looked, uh, looked like he was taken down in the corner of the end zone. No flags on the play. Courtney Barnes on the pressure on Martin made him unloaded early. Well, David Martin is somebody that they're really counting on. Everybody now, as, as a result of Randy Moss, everybody wants that guy. That 6'4", 6'5", guy, about 210, 215, 220, that can run. But up to this point, all that physical capability has not equaled production. 
Robert Lattermilk on to attempt a 34-yard field goal. And you can tell by the groan, no good. 35-17, Tennessee. They get back in this football game. They trail 35-17. Tennessee not about to take any chances. They still got the first team defense in there. Wyoming will take over after the missed field goal attempt. And they'll take over first and ten from the 20. Looking to break a big one. Flag on the play. They were looking to hook up with Willie King. And might we see pass interference? We certainly might. Wyoming floods the field, has the motion go in the other direction, has an isolated situation, throws it up and gets the P.I. Andre Lott, the guilty party. In college football, of course, if it's longer than 15 yards where the penalty occurs, this is a 15-yard penalty, of course, of the NFL. That's interference. On the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. They'll bring it out to the 35-yard line. At some point here in this drive, someone defensively for Tennessee meet, needs to make a play. Because while the momentum hasn't necessarily shifted back as a fumble, Wyoming certainly is unafraid now. They're kind of coasting a little bit. At least, uh, rather, Tennessee is. Again, the last drive for Wyoming that led to the touchdown... 14 plays, 98 yards. Mike Irvin was able to fall on the football and keep it for Wyoming. Second and 11 from the 34. Could be the final play of the quarter. Yeah, we're not ready to go yet. Now they roll the clock, and we'll not even get a playoff here to end the third quarter. And we don't. That will do it. One quarter left to play. Tennessee taking it to Wyoming, 35-10. And they have done it with an explosive offense and a terrific, imposing defense. A look at the score quarter by quarter. Tennessee's had one really good quarter. <laughs> and the other two have been just okay. Here's Swanson. In all sorts of trouble. And he is sacked at the 24-yard line. Will Overstreet was there to bring him down. A team record ninth sack by the Tennessee defense. Well, it's been a night for the Tennessee defense, and of course, they really have not received the credit in the past. I think star players on the offensive side of the ball continue to accrue the notoriety, but you can see there's the fumbles and the sack, great coverage on the part of Goodrich for the pick. And of course, here's the touchdown by Westmoreland, just easy stride into the end zone for six. Tennessee defense has been all over the field and top. Third and 21 now at the 24. Thompson out of the shotgun. Kevin Darvis snap, and he's going to go down again. This time at the 12-yard line. Mickey Allen there, and they're going to make it a lot tougher for the next Tennessee team to get a record. They're up to 10 now, the new school record. Kind of tough when you go with the blitz and you drop the snap from center. Difficult situation. Allen able to get right on top of it. That is the 15th play for negative yardage. I guess you could say by the Wyoming offense or the Tennessee defense. By the way, it's all good for the Vols. This is fourth and 32. Try to punt. Eric Parker is deep for it. That snap is okay. Okay. Tom Waring's kick is great. And it bounces out, pushing Tennessee all the way back to their own 31-yard line. A 56-yard punt by Tom Waring. Happy birthday, Tom. Holly, what do you have? During the spring practice, Wyoming kept working on Tennessee's blitz packages. 
but what they may not have known is just how many Tennessee has. When we were in their def defensive meeting room yesterday, we saw they have 19 regular blitzes and then 10 zone blitzes drawn up in the board. The scary thing for Wyoming, they may not even have all the blitzes in tonight's package. Todd? That's exactly right. They had some interesting names for them, too. Double bullets, Y, cow, you know, all those different things. Love that terminology. Moon, shock, silver, three. I was quizzing Todd on him. That's kind of a Mission Impossible <laughs> feel, too. <laughs> and he got everyone, by the way. Play action. Martin going deep. And there are some goals. Cedric Wilson. And the flag flies. Robbie Duncan was the man on the cover. The thing is, the, the official that was running with the receiver and the defensive back, that official lets it go. Duncan right there, he's beat. Now he runs towards him, tries to cut him off, bumps him a little there bit with no there. Foul. There, there is, is no foul, foul because the throw is passed. You can see the official right there nodding his head, saying the same thing. It wasn't catchable, and even so, that, that falls into the heading of incidental contact. Duncan's been around the block, too. I think he knows what he can get away with. Hey, Val fans might think this is over, but evidently Tennessee does not. They're still looking for the big strike here. Still have all their starters in on offense. We're coming up on 13 minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Up only 35-17. Handoff. Lewis. Not much there. He's taken down by Jeff Boyle, the nose guard for Wyoming. We've called his name a few times tonight. He's done a pretty decent job, despite the fact that Tennessee has been able to run as well as they have. This is a young man who's a farming All-American. An interesting distinction. Also listed as the strongest player in the weight room. That'll earn you some points with the coaches and the teammates, I think. It does indeed. Here's Martin. Again, throwing long. Big play. And just behind the receiver, Eric Parker. Trent Campbell was there with him step to step. Good defensive stand for Wyoming. They just don't seem to want to go away. A 28-point blitz now is a little bit in the past in Tennessee, showing the raggedness of putting it on cruise control. And the Volunteers will punt here from their 34-yard line. Even Leverton start to see the field a little bit more as well. His fourth punt of the night, John Jennings, is back deep for Wyoming. Gets it away. Pretty good punt there as well. And Jennings will field it at the 15. Makes one move, avoid, avoids a couple of tacklers, and knocked out at the 27-yard line. 51-yard punt, 11 yards on the return. Wyoming still hanging around. We hope you do the same. Tennessee ranked in the top 10 the last 40 consecutive weeks, 52 of the last 53, and based on this effort, they don't appear to be going anywhere else. And I'm sure the coach Phil Fulmer is a little bit concerned because, yes, they're able to turn it on and dominate one quarter of the football game, but I'm sure what he's going to tell his team after this game is over is that's not going to be good enough two weeks from now when we're down in the swamp. Again, a place they have not won since 1971. Here's Swanson, connects with a receiver who has dropped down at the 35-yard line. Cliff Fry on the reception, putting together a nice game for himself. That's been the most effective route for Wyoming, has been that slant route at about 10 yards. Been able to find the seams consistently on that, and Swanson put up some pretty good numbers now. Officials timeout on the play. Stoner was 6 of 9, the starter, before the shoulder injury. Swanson, the backup, he is 11 for 13. Picked up 9 yards on that last reception. Well, talk about growing up in a hurry. I was going to say Swanson's certainly not the same quarterback that came into the game in the second quarter. He was, uh, he was a little intimidated, needless to say. Now he's feeling much more comfortable. Only two in completion. That's pretty impressive, especially against this defense. And you think about it, the education, you know, the year following and a senior season when they have to go into a place like this, whether it's Georgia or Tennessee or wherever, and he'll be much better off for it. I know, a great story to tell. Another completed pass to Wendell Montgomery. Flag goes down, too. It appears there was a face mask. Question here will be whether or not it was incidental. Montgomery with his third catch. 
Goodrich was there on the stop. He had the earlier interception for the touchdown. And then face mask during the tackle on the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Back downstairs to Holly. Guys, Matt wants to take a lot of earlier. He has not ever had any live game action. He's done a nice job coming in against the number one team returning from last year to have some composure eventually after he had those early fumbles. Thanks, Holly. Yeah, when you, you, know, when you find that out, then you really appreciate the effort this young man has had here tonight. Calling signals out of the shotgun. Three receivers out to his right. Looks left first, looks right, and that is swarmed on top of. 11th sack of the game by Tennessee. That one goes to Sean Ellis, his second of the football game. Once again, here's Reese Davis. Steve, North Carolina State punt block team added again against South Carolina over on ESPN. Brian Williams just smothering that thing. Corin Robinson takes it in. First touchdown of the night. And she stayed up on Lou Holt 10-0, as I mentioned, that game over on ESPN. And look at Tommy Tuberville's debut for Auburn. A tough one. Appalachian State, number four in one double-A, but not supposed to be doing that. It's surprising to me that North Carolina State blocks the punts that they do. Certainly, you had to practice on that all week. How could you get a punt block? I mean, you're saying to myself, Nate Scott in the football game now. As Swanson throws right and completes it to Brock Ralph. The redshirt freshman, Dion Grant, is there to make another stop. Tough opening for those new coaches, right? Tupperville, Bowden, Holtz, all struggling. Lose struggles are expected to continue. It's going to be a tough year. It is. It's going to be a tough year. But if anybody can turn that program around, he can. He wanted a challenge, right? He's got it. He got it. <laughs> Third down and 17 now. 44-yard line is a line of scrimmage. Here's Swanson, looks to his left and completes the pass. Now trying to make a one-on-one -on -one move. Completes it to Ralph again. And a stop by Derek Edmonds on the play. You know, with the, the game here, Steve, 9.50 and running, you would have thought that at halftime this is going to be a great opportunity for Tennessee to get to have some reserves, have game experience. But because of the tweener situation, you see Ellis down on the field. Because of the situation where they're not quite blown out, they've had to play their starters the entire time. That's good from a conditioning standpoint. But at some point, you want your young people to get game experience. And I think that Coach Bill Fulmer thought this was going to be a good opportunity at halftime. It hasn't turned out that way. Speaking of game experience, the whole discussion Notre Dame Michigan all week about playing a first game. The two sides to that. Do you in favor of playing an early game? Oh, I think it's a great advantage. I think it's a huge advantage. To the team that plays. Absolutely. That's already played. Even though the other team sees you on tape and sees you on film and able no, to watch no, what no, you do. No, no, I'll take experience over the tape, you know, over the tape in any day. Okay. Sean Ellis is the player that is down on the field. He's had a couple of sacks already for Tennessee. Tom Brady sure looked good today for Michigan. Right to the last minute, uh, Coach Lloyd Carr was trying to decide as to what he was going to do, and he certainly made the right decision with Brady. He had an outstanding day. Of course, it helps have that eight train in the backfield, too. He's a stud. A couple of stacked teams. <laughs> That game is seen earlier this afternoon over on ABC. Again, in front of better than 111,000 people. The big house just got bigger. Tom Waring is back to punt it away. Eric Parker is back deep for Tennessee. And this is not a Dodger Stadium crowd here in Tennessee either. I don't think anybody's left. 35-17, 9.46 to go here in the fourth. And we've still got 107,000 people here. Third largest crowd ever. In Knoxville. Well, SEC football, everybody who's not, a, those that are not aware of it, need to know that uh, it's, it's more than just a game down here. This is just a great, great community for college sports here in Knoxville. On our way over, we saw a couple people dressed in orange today, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Every single, dogs and cats are dressed in orange here, folks, in Knoxville on game day. The return brought back to the 25-yard line. Jared Jerinigan able to make the stop. They have to have the pep rally in our hotel. Not sure if I signed up for that. Tennessee on their way to a victory. For Tennessee, the schedule gets tougher and tougher until they have five games on the schedule against teams ranked in the top 25 in the preseason. The Florida game already talks about Arkansas, Alabama, Georgia, and Notre Dame. Here's Jamal Lewis. 
You can tell how seriously Tennessee is taking this. Val Rich came up to make the stop. And all the starters are still in there, including T. Martin, including Jamal Lewis. It's not a, it, there's not a real, I'm not sure there's a comfort level yet at this point. It's going to be interesting, the conversation after this game, when people are going to say, you know, 35-10, you're anticipating a blowout. It hasn't worked out that way. Oh, maybe they, that, the ranking's right. That's right. You know, because that was a big deal coming Absolutely. in. Coming in ranked third in the nation. Lost ground after winning a national title, and maybe even getting bigger. They get a big game here. Dante Stallworth on the connection. That's good for 17 yards as he was forced out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Makes a nice catch at the point of attack, able to elude the defensive back, get the extra yardage. The numbers on T. Martin, 12 and 19, 187 yards and two scores. We saw Stallworth's numbers from a season ago. All the numbers are favorable tonight for Tennessee. 11 sacks out of the defense tonight. A new school record here against Wyoming. Lois there for a short gainer. He'll add to his 138 yards already tonight. We told you he was 139 yards away from 2,000. So he will likely be get the yard there. Stuck on 138, one yard shy of 2,000. Kind of like the odometer in the car. You know when it changes? Do you watch your odometer when it changes? I think that's kind of you interesting. Bet. When it goes to 20,000 to 30. There you go. And there it is. Congratulations to Jamal Lewis. Over 2,000 yards. And not just a 2,000 yard rusher, Todd. I might point out that he becomes the fastest to 2,000 in Tennessee history. This being his 17th game, Charlie Garner did it in 22 games. As soon as we're done here, we'll get you some pro football information. The NFL tonight is coming up immediately following our broadcast from Knoxville, Tennessee. In all seriousness, congratulations to Jamal Lewis. Start working on 3,000, huh? Here's Martin, the whistle. Flags away from the play. The clock is stopped at 7.41 left here in the fourth. 35-17 again. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. In case you're just joining us, Wyoming had that 10-7 lead after the first quarter. There's a man right there that isn't very happy. And the reason he isn't isn't to score. It's the mental preparation of his team. 35-17. He feels like they should have blown him out by now. They haven't scored a point here in the second half. And then silly penalties like this where they're in motion. That, that just doesn't make a coach very happy. Four wideouts in the game now. The T. Martin's offense. Here's Martin dropping a pass. Steps up. Looks to tuck it under and go, but he is stopped at the 44-yard line. That's good pursuit on the part of Pat Hirsch, the backup bandit who was able to drag him down from behind. It seems like every time that he has scrambled out of the pocket, Seems like he gets the first down to give Hirsch credit. Able to collar him. Brings up a fourth and ten, and Tennessee will punt it away. David Leverton is back out for it. Jennings deep for Wyoming. They we're kind of stuck here in the middle, Ty. Are we to be impressed by Tennessee tonight or not? And that punt sails and sails into the end zone. Baval still scoreless in the second half, yet enjoying a comfortable lead. The score here is 35-17, and Wyoming looking to make it a little bit closer. Tommy Nash on the grab there, who's forced out of bounds. Clock stop at 6.28 left here in the fourth quarter. I asked you before we were so rudely interrupted by that commercial. Are, are we to be impressed by Tennessee's effort tonight or not? I'm leaning towards the latter myself. Well, certainly certainly for 15 minutes you had to be impressed. But it, I think we have to give some credit here to the Wyoming defense. You know, in the first half they're torched for 295 yards. Here in the second half they've only given up 134 yards and no points. So, I mean, that's the group that's been spending a lot of time on the field. But give them credit as you see Nash down there with the hamstring. And my guess is 
his cramps. And th those yardage moves, should point out, that's what Tennessee's first string of stone in the game and Wyoming being beaten up defensively with injuries. Yeah, a couple of people that were out. I mean, Wyoming has really been a game team here in the second half. you got to give them a lot of credit. They could have just folded it up and gone home, but that's not what they've done. And of all the people, you know, we, we were talking about the fact that second, third string people getting experience, young people, this and that. Certainly, this has to do a lot for young Swanson and his confidence. Thinking, that, you know, that if I can hang here in the second half against Tennessee, I like my chances against Air Force and Weber State and Colorado State. And the rest of the people are going to have to play. Downstairs to Holly. Hey, guys. Interestingly enough, Tommy Nash has a Tennessee connection of his own. The Wyoming receiver's brother, Marcus Nash, played here for Tennessee. Their dad is here watching. Although Marcus wanted to be here, he can't because he is currently with the Denver Broncos. Did they have their last exhibition game? Why didn't he fly down? What's up? Oh, he might be you know, working for the regular season. He and Al Wilson could have shared a plane. That's true. Denver's got a busy week ahead of them. Monday Night Football. Season debut over on ABC. John Jennings has checked into the football game. He's been doing a lot of the return work. And now we see him in the running back position. On a second and five from the 25. With the man in motion. They give it to Jennings. He's got a good gain out beyond the 45-yard line. When I watch a game like this, I, I'm reminded a couple of years ago, I believe it was 1994, when Penn State was playing, I want to say Indiana, but I'm not sure. Anyway, they were up by the score of, I think it was 35-14. to 14, And it was the middle of the season, and Joe Paterno put in some substitutes. They scored two late touchdowns with two-point conversion, so the game is 35-29. to 29. Suddenly they went from number one, they went out of the ranking and didn't win the national championship. So as strange as that seems, coaches now in this position have to be cognizant of that. Because conceivably after tonight, you could say, well, wait a minute, 35 is a big deal. you are not having seen the game. Right. You know, they could be like five or six or something. Yep. Who knows? At home against an inferior opponent. And of course, everybody always says, well, you know, the rankings don't mean anything early in the season. Well, they do if you have to jump over that many people waiting for them to lose. Jennings saw the completion. Another catch for him. As it's second and six from the 49. Here's Swanson now. His pass. Not sure which target he was going for. There was no one in the area. Maybe a tip ball. Dominique Stevenson able to get to it. Well, you know, there's a big difference. Something else that's interesting to note here, Steve. As you can see the body language now, Swanson, before he's a little bit afraid. The Stevenson able to get, get a piece of that as it falls to the turf. His body language indicates he's no longer afraid. He's feeling some confidence. This might be a situation. Could be full down territory here. There's only his third incomplete pass in the football game. He's 15 to 18. Good for the kid. Swanson will step up and make some positive yardage as he dives across the 45 in the Tennessee territory. A seven-yard gain and a first down. Well, Paul, he's not going to make anybody forget Steve Young. He does a nice job at the end when he finally breaks out of the pocket to avoid the one tackler and get the first down, leaning forward. Good effort, 15. Timeout on the field. No, they don't call a timeout. Paul continues to move. Here's Swanson. Avoids one tackle, runs into his own offensive lineman before being taken down on the play. Darwin Walker there. That'll go as the 12th sack of the night. And they continue to improve on that new school record for Tennessee. That just goes to show, though, how numbers can be deceiving. If your team had 12 sacks and your runner had over 140 yards, you think to yourself, we're up by 30. You know, so... Sometimes they're lies, damn lies, and statistics. What a touchdown here by Wyoming. It's an interesting score to pick up in your newspaper tomorrow and see it. Just in case you missed it on ESPN, too. Here's Swanson. He's looking deep momentarily, not trying to run away from trouble. And let's keep piling up the sacks. Making them a 13 on the night for Tennessee. Mickey Allen got him that time, his second sack of the night. Once again, coming from the secondary, Allen very persistent. Got knocked off, ran completely across the field to make the tackle for, as you pointed out, the 13th sack. 13 sacks in all, 18 plays for losses by the Wyoming offense slash Tennessee defense, depending upon which side you're on. Brings up a third and 14 from the 48. 
Swanson out of the shotgun. Three rod receivers to his right. Low snap, but he shovels it off. To Arlen Smith. Well, Nate Scott on the play. Interesting, it had kind of a Statue of Liberty thing to it. You know, when you go back, fake the pass, and slip it under the arm with the forward handoff. Interesting play, and of course, as I pointed out earlier, this is four down territory. Fourth down now, right around five, and they're going for it. And they, again, they had told us throughout they were going to go for it. They go for the win on fourth down. What should they have gone for prior in this game? Fourth and four here from the 38. Swanson calling signals. Three wide receivers to his right. He looks left, looking deep, and he's got a man, but it's the wrong guy. Nearly intercepted. It was intercepted. Deion Grant had it. Now, this is, this is an interesting thing here, Steve, as a defensive back. You want the stat, and you want the interception, but, of course, Tennessee field position-wise is better off if you just bats it down. Instead, he wants to tell his friends, yeah, I made a pick, and you know what? That was, that, that was a very good catch. Injured player down on the field. It's like two injured volunteers down on the field at the 45-yard line. While they are attended to, we'll step out. 35-17, Tennessee. Injured players were D'Angelo Lloyd and Darwin Walker. Both helped off the field. Appear to be okay. 321 to go here in the fourth on first and 10. They give to Jamal Lewis. Still in there, and... Still taking the handoff from T. Martin. And Wyoming calling a timeout. I like that. Hey, you want to talk about going for it on fourth there and four? Go. Why not? Never, never say die. You know what? And the interesting thing is that people are saying, what's the point? Come on. Why are you doing this? Well, the thing is, is that you want to communicate to your young people that it is a never say die thing. You never know what can happen, so you want to pursue it. That may seem a little Pollyannish, but I think football players need that. And as you pointed out, I think you made a very good point earlier with regards to the fact that there, there aren't supposed to be such things as moral victories. But Wyoming's going to come out of this and say, hey, look, we outscored them in the second half. We played hard. We did what we had to do. Okay, they're a little bit better than we are, but I like our chances coming into these other games. There was the potential for both teams to walk out of here happy. And now I'm not sure that's the case. I think Wyoming can walk up with their heads held high, and I'm not sure Philip Fulmer is going to feel real good about this win by his club. Well, especially on the offensive side of the ball. They made mistakes. They had a couple of fumbles. They've had penalties. They just haven't been able to generate drives here in the second half. And as we pointed out, you know, they do have two weeks to prepare for Florida. But I'm sure that Philip Fulmer and his staff is going to stress to his young people that what happened here tonight against Wyoming is not going to be good enough against Florida in the swamp. It just isn't. 3.13 left here in the fourth, 35-17 in favor of Tennessee, and the Vols do have the football at their own nine-yard line. High formation behind T. Martin. And once again, they get it to Jamal Lewis. Not much there. Now, that strategy by Wyoming would lead to calling another timeout here, right? And that's what they just did. Well, Todd, another timeout, Wyoming. They have one remaining. You mentioned next up that this kind of effort for Tennessee won't work in the swamps. And they go down to Florida in a couple of weeks from now. Lesson cost three fumbles in that game. He was the SEC Defensive Player of the Week after that one. All four players no longer around to help out Tennessee against Florida. They need some big plays from some other people. Here's Martin looking deep. Got a man. Complete. Down to the 27-yard line. The big play go-to guy is Cedric Wilson on the bomb. Alan Jones step for step and couldn't bat it away. Play action certainly sucked up Wyoming there because I'm sure they were just anticipating the fact that Tennessee was just trying to run the thing out. But the thing that impresses me here about T. Martin is his ability to throw on the run. He rolls to his left. Now look at this. He's going to come back into the middle of the field. Look where the throw is. Makes him come back and get a well, it's just a terrific throw by Martin going to his left. And don't forget, as a right-hander, this is a very difficult throw. He throws off the off foot, in this case the right foot. Not able to get a lot behind the ball normally, but in this case he does. Nice arc, nice throw, nice catch. I will walk away from this game joining many volunteer fans saying T. Martin is underrated. He's had a terrific passing game tonight. That time gives to Jamal Lewis. He is stopped by Al Rich, just shy of the 10-yard line. And we check in again with Holly. 
gentlemen, the Tennessee coaches and players this week gave us all the right answers. None of them said the F word. Florida, they are very focused on the Wyoming Cowboys, but they maybe have a chance to look ahead now. The fans already are. You see this. Will Rogers never met a man he didn't like. Will Rogers never met Steve Spurrier. You think the fans are ready for two <laughs> weeks from now? I think they are. Those t-shirts were sold out, by the way. Not all that popular here in Nashville. <laughs> Spurrier, not the t-shirt. The t-shirt is very popular. Stopped as they look to run left with Lewis. And the clock will continue to move. Under two minutes to play. Jason Dressen able to make the stop. Again, just as soon as we get out of here, we'll send you to the kick more hands of the guys back at the NFL Tonight Studios. That's coming up next here on ESPN2. A little college football into a little pro football on ESPN2. It would appear to me here that Tennessee is content to run the ball and not necessarily jump into the end zone even though the crowd of course is egging them on to do just that. Give is up the middle to Lewis. You know from a sport here from the crowd. Well I was just gonna say from a sportsmanship standpoint I like this. I like Phil Fulmer what he's doing. You know he's, he's not trying to run up the score. He's content to do what he's doing with the clock now under a minute. He realizes right here that if he can run the ball up the middle again and it doesn't do anything, the clock's going to run out. So that's fine. Pretty terrific return for Jamal Lewis. 24 carries, 158 yards. Coming off a serious knee injury in game four last season. He has returned and in strong fashion. In case you missed the start, his first carry from scrimmage went for 21 yards. Here's Martin rolling up and throwing. It's complete. Just shy of the end zone. That time it's David Martin who went up to make the grab, and he's forced out that'll stop the clock with 26 seconds left. Well, I'm sure glad I went to the I went to the extent to make that point about running out the clock, aren't you? Said once again, play action goes to his left, does a nice does a nice job getting outside the contain. And Martin, an athletic six foot four inch, is able to climb the ladder and come down with it. Big height advantage for those Tennessee receivers against these smaller defensive backs for Wyoming, but you could say that about just about every team in the nation. They do run from the one, and they go in. Touchdown, it's Jamal Lewis. His third touchdown of the game. The other two broke off for 25 and 34. This one a chippy from one yard away. And Tennessee opens up a 41-17 lead. Well, this is something we talked about earlier. Frankly, I thought I thought there was a possibility that T. Martin was just going to kneel down. But instead, he gives it to Lewis. And, of course, there are a lot of different schools of thought where that is concerned. Confidence for Lewis, another touchdown pad, his statistics. And, of course, as you mentioned, when they pick up the paper and you see 42-17, to 17, that looks a lot better than 35-17. to 17. So a lot of factors involved in this. Robert Loudermilk makes it 42-17. 22 ticks remain on the clock. Loudermilk will kick it off. 42-17, Tennessee. Six. Here's Bry carrying it out from the goal line. Has a seam, breaks one tackle, that cuts to the outside. And a good effort by him. Could have easily gone out of bounds, instead decides to take the hit. And 10 seconds remaining on the clock. Nice return. That's another part of the game that Tennessee's going to have to be aware of. Their kick coverage on kickoffs has not been very good. In fact, they resorted to kicking a couple of pop-ups earlier because of the fact that they've been creating those holes for the returners. <laughs> Injured players being helped off the field now. Ten seconds remaining. Wyoming has it first and ten in the 39-yard line. Matt Swanson, in case you missed it, replaced the injured Jay Stoner, left with a shoulder injury. And he's done a rather nice job in relief. 15 to 19 for 121 yards. And he'll look for more to go off on a strong note. And he'll get another chance off the incomplete pass. He was looking for Nate Scott, and he'll do it again.
talked a little about the numbers of Matt Swanson. Not bad there coming in. He did have the two picks, but a lot of that's in inexperience. You know, 75% completion rate. That's not awful. Figures to be the final play of the football game. Completes the pass to Nate Scott. And as time expires, he is brought down on the Wyoming side of the 50-yard line. That'll do it. The nation's longest winning streak is intact at 14 games and counting. Tennis